with the get down. What's up, people? Your boy Protocol checking in the building. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all for hanging around. Five minutes into this thing, man. Had to get some technical things right, man. One in the chat if you got your boy. One in the chat if you got your boy. Shouts out to Justine checking in the building. Hotep Nation's in strong. Who else we got in the building? Oh, man, I saw some stuff over on Rumble, if I'm not mistaken. I think my partner in this thing. Mike, where you at, partner? Check in if you in this thing, my brother, Fresh Mike. I think I saw Fuego over on Rumble. Let's see here. All right, all right. Justine got me. That's right. Let's see. Who else over in the in the Rumble area? Yeah, I see Fuego over there. He ain't pop in on the other side yet. Give me a... Give me a good old comment over here. There we go. There we go. Bros is checking in. Fuego's here. He says, I sound great. Fresh Mike. I know you out, day. Let's just go ahead and uh hit us with the old heel year. Alcoholist. I'm uh I set some new things up this week, guys. So um yeah, I'm just getting all that right and making sure we good together. For some reason, I couldn't hear what y'all was hearing when it came to the the standby music, the boarding music, you know, when you was walking through the tunnel. Yeah, I couldn't hear it. I don't know why. But it is what it is, man. That is the uh, that is the greatness of technology, right? I'd rather that than, you know, no access to the Internet or no access to my money. Like I just seen one of my bros go through down here and the whole Internet was down in the whole section of the state he was in. He couldn't get nothing to eat no gas no nothing it was ugly so um yeah man the only issue i got is not being able to hear a little something something if y'all can hear it and everything's great then man that shit sounds good to me fuego says loud and clear and the music was good so good y'all heard it i couldn't hear it maybe it wasn't up for me to hear anyway man we got a big fun show tonight i think supposedly I snap. Shouts out to my Geechee brother. <laughs> Kwame Brown. I think I snap. Yeah. Um, that was for good times, good times. But um, yeah, man, I think we're gonna have us a good time tonight, man. We gonna uh we're gonna jump in a little bit of this here music industry stuff, because I had a good weekend when it came to uh, uh the music industry is concerned. Or at least week. So it wasn't even a weekend, it was the week. So a lot of things going on in Savannah, some good things happen. We got some good things going on this weekend now that I think about it as well. So, um, you know, we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about the crazy shit because, you know, we had Quiet on the set pop up and then Diddy, what's going on with him? So, you know, we're going to dive into that. Plus, um, you know, we got to talk a little 45, 47. And I got a dude, man. I, I'm in this group. I'll tell you about this group. But, man, buddy, that group is very interesting. So, um, you know, dude made some comments and I made some comments and um, he was like, hey, you, me. Uh, five reasons why five reasons why let's go i was like shoot let's go man matter of fact come on the show we can do it live on the show so um we're gonna see if he actually comes in and um we're gonna talk he says he's apolitical he's not in no party but he believes that joe biden and the democrats are the lesser of the two evils whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean we're gonna find out because I, I ain't gonna lie y'all i hate that statement the fuck you want a lesser of the two evils bitch i don't want no evil so how about, how about we do what we got to do to eradicate the evil? It's going to take a little work, but we can do it. And one side is giving you the tools, and the other side is removing the tools. So if we got the – anyway, we're going to get into that. Also, we're going to talk about that whole uh, fine situation and the properties with 45 because some shit's going on in Savannah. And it kind of links in the same bed frame, if you would, of what's going on there. So we're going to hit on that. And – uh. Sign die happened this week in Savannah. Oh, well, in Georgia. So um, we're going to talk about that as well. But I don't mean to bore you, drum y'all out with all that, man, because we got to get our jam on before we get started. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into the jams because you know how your boy pro do it in today. Because, you know, I'm feeling froggy and I'm going to jump. You know what I'm saying? We're going to play my song with my partner. This is Clay Hodges' song. With, and, and I was featured on the song It's called Boo Foo by us Fuck you 
You know what I'm saying? So uh, we're going to go ahead and, and jump into that. And happy birthday to Clay, man. Today is his birthday, and he's about to go turn up down in the MIA. So you know what? I'm going to play our song for my dog birthday. Y'all jam out with me, and we're going to get this show started right. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Motherfuckers with this bullshit. What about now? Can you hear me now? Can I be heard now? Heard the song fine, you cut out after coming back. All right. All right. We we working, hold on. We about to find out what's going on right now. See, that's why I told y'all, new stuff. Let's see. No. 
this is interesting tonight. Audio is good. Audio is good. I'm back. There you go. Sounds roomy though. All right. This is interesting. But this is the shit that happens. <laughs> That's what happened. It makes sense now. <laughs> it makes sense now. All right. How we sound now? Am I, am I back right? Tell me if you can get this. All right, let's see. We're going to find out. He says, buckle up, bitches. Here comes the turbulence. Fuck this Joni clip saying no troublemaker. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Jonah came in with the turbulence, y'all. That's what happened. Jonah came in with the turbulence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So what I said was, but how y'all feel about that sound? Did did it make you bounce? Did you did, was you was you froggy? Like, did you want to jump? Like, did you did you feel that? And I don't sound like, all right, okay, cool, cool. Didn't even get the drink cart down. <laughs> Didn't even get the drink cart down the aisle. Everybody had to rush back. It was it was a a, a, a wind a, a storm that came through. Ain't nobody seen it. It was storm. It was storm. Oh, shit, yeah. My partner in the building. My boy is here. All right. All right. We got it right. We got the sound back. Everything's good. We not roomy. You know what I'm saying? We ain't even. I'm gonna be real. We ain't even make it out the. We ain't make it off the runway yet. We ain't even make it off the runway yet. We talk about the windstorm that came through. That thing done shook the whole. It done shook the whole. Uh, <laughs> it done shook the whole runway, man. We got stuck, but that's all right. We good, ladies and gentlemen. The weather is clear now. Right, the little the, this freak windstorm that came through and pushed us a little bit. It's all right. We back. We good, and we finna get ready to take off, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on board Friday Night Flights with services covering everything you knew and might have missed this week. We're clear for takeoff and be expected to hit the air in a moment's time. We ask that you please fasten your seat belts and secure all baggage underneath your seat or in the overhead compartments. We also ask that your seats and table trays are put in the upright position for takeoff. Please make sure that all personal electronic devices, including your laptops and cell phones, are fully charged. Or in the very least bit, put on the charges, man. Smoking is allowed during the duration of this flight and drinks are heavily encouraged. Thank you for choosing Real Ninja Airlines. Please, y'all, enjoy your flights. <laughs> All right, man. We here. Justine's in the building. Haram life. I see you, my dog. My partner done jumped in, like I said. Fresh Mike's here. He on that white people uh um white people standard. That good old uh wigger time, if you would, as he says. Uh so we, you know, appreciate you for coming in when you did come in, my friend. Um let's see here. My dog Haram Life says, Happy birthday or happy belated birthday, Fuego. My dog, happy belated birthday. I hope you enjoyed yourself and turn up this weekend that's what you do turn up in the best way you know how to turn up whether it's in the yard with the barbecue whether it's at the pool whether it's just in the house flipping through watching x-men doesn't really matter you just turn up the best way you know how to my dog jonathan came in and he brought the turbulence with him Jonah says, uh, just wait for my call in and my battery should last today sitting on negative 26 cents but getting broke off of 20K plus next week. Good God, my friend. They got to see the reason for Troublemaker Jonah. Hey, man. Shouts out to that 20K break off. If anybody understands, knowing that it's a double digit K break off coming on the other side of the week, I can speak on that. And it's a very, very, very damn good feeling. Yes. Yes, it is. So uh, congrats on that, man. Yeah, we'll have that call in. Um, it, we don't have that much of a jam-packed show, but we got enough. Uh, I ain't going to make us wait 
four hours, man. I ain't gonna make. I ain't, you said happy birthday. Shout out to Mike. Say happy birthday. Uh, I ain't gonna make us wait four hours, man. I'm not gonna do it. All right, I'm gonna get through this fairly quick. Okay, because we got a uh, we got somebody supposed to check in, so we are gonna see how that goes. I need to check my messages and, and see if he had messaged me back, cause he uh, I don't know. He was acting like he was a little scared. I did see where he posted. Um, hold on, let's find out. All right. Okay, he mentioned me in a comment. What would he say? I am in Illinois. N- I- hold on, y'all. This is crazy. Hmm. This guy. See, it's an old guy too. He probably don't want to smoke. I may bring I may bring up the comments and stuff. I think he deleted some because some of them seem to have disappeared magically. But um some of the other ones are still there. But um, yeah, man, he just uh he he messaged me. He I mean, excuse me, he commented on a post where I had to track him down on. Um <laughs> Oh man. Did he message me? Let's find out. No, oh, he he ain't even read the message. He ain't even read the message, y'all. He ain't read the message. He still he old, man. I don't I don't know. I don't know. We going to see. He did like I said, he did start his his okay, so he challenged me, right? Cuz he's in this, you know, but there's this group for Rashad Ritchie. You guys know who Rashad uh, Richie is? You guys familiar with that name, Rashad Richie? One in the chat if you're familiar with Rashad Richie. And um, while I wait on that to come up, I'll, I'll pull him up. I know somebody, somebody in the chat has heard of Rashad Richie before. Especially if y'all be messing around with the, the politics stuff. Okay, yeah, I found it on on that. Oh, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Anybody know who Rashad Richie is? Let's see if you've seen this face before. Do Here we go. All right, guys. You seen this this person before? Okay. You've probably seen his face before. He works for TYT. All right. The Young Turks. Black guy. You, you, I'm pretty sure this one of his clips of some sort has come across your desk or your phone, your screen, your timeline, your something. He loves to talk about, uh, he loves to race bait. He's one of the big race baiters they have over there. Anyway, he has this group on Facebook, right? It's like Real Talk with Rashad Ritchie. And it's funny, for all my political heads, um, there are two uh, moderators for said group. Only two. Only two admins. Only two admins. And the two admins are this young man, Rashad Ritchie. Oh, and he's based out of Atlanta, too. So this just will add a little more context. Atlanta is in Georgia, for those who don't know. <laughs> you know, Fuego, sir, you might not be too far off. You might not be too far off. Yeah. Anyway, going back to the Facebook group, there's a there's a two two admins. It's Rashad Ritchie, this uh, guy with TYT Undisputable. Um, he is also a radio host, a well known radio host in the Atlanta area, right? He's the moderator admin, and a young man by the name of damn, it slipped me just that quick. He's going against um. He's going uh, going against the judge 
in the Trump case. Um, dang, his name uh, escaped me just that fast. Hold on, I'm about to, I'm about to get his name. He got an old funny name too. He got an old super funny name. Man, I had a brain fart just that fast. Real talk. Uh huh. All right. Let me go to members. Robert. Robert Patillo. LS, where you at? Where where is LS? See, LS knows. Cause he's he's the resident Atlanta guy. I always forget the name. But yeah, funny name. Robert Patillo. Robert Patillo, who's the judge who's running against uh Judge McAfee, who's the judge in Trump case. The guy, his opponent, is the moderator for this group. And then there's this guy who works for TYT. So you guys can imagine how far to the left this group is. It's bad, boy. It's real bad. Michael Jackson bad. But, you know, sometimes I like uh, shark hunting. So I'll just be in there watching the shark pool. It's more like guppy hunting. Cause... But the TDS in there is ridiculous. Like, you want to see some bad TDS? Like, that shit's ugly over there. And, you know, I'll talk about it. One day I will do a show exposing that group. I'm pretty sure it'll be the last time I'm in that group. They'll get rid of me like that. But I'm going to expose the inside of that group because it's ridiculous. And this is the, the stuff that we're actually against out here in the streets. And when we talk about the Dems and the Blue Stronghold, like, this is why. And we're going to talk about, you know, I guess this is a good segue to go ahead and talk into what I – really wanted to talk about prior to getting in all the foolishness because this has been a heavy topic and conversation across the interweb really for the last week for sure but the last two weeks and that is like you know the republican party and black outreach and going into the black communities and that is such a entangled web let's let's go ahead and get Get Richie off of here. We don't we don't need Richie on here no more. He's uh he's he's done. Dealing with the black community and conservatives or just politics in general is a very, very, very entangled web. All right. We got a group of people who've been indoctrinated, beat, um just exhausted into supporting a particular party, that party being the Democrat party. And I don't mean bait like with the whip or with the chain or anything of that nature. It's just, it's a mental beat down, right? Because they've been told, um, Oh, the Democrats are for you. They're the ones who look out for you. They're the ones who love the little man, blah, 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 blah. They just been told this rhetoric over and over and over again to where, it's a part of the genetic makeup of a black person. If you would, it's like you voting. Okay. You're voting Democrat. You're not voting Democrat. Then you're not voting at all. It's like no in between. And they work so hard with that and ingraining that and making the Republican, the evil overlord, if you would now, mind you, I want you. And, and this is what, I have so much problem with when it comes to, you know, blacks and Democrats, right? Because, okay, first and foremost, the fact that I know what I know, knowing that the Democrat Party is and always have been the party of the KKK, that I don't give a damn about a party switch, the Democrat Party has always been the father, the birther, the creator, the carrier, the incubator of the KKK, no Democrat party, no KKK, no Democrat party, no Jim Crow laws. I mean, it could have, but we're dealing with actual factuals. All right. Actual factuals. The actual factuals are the Democrat party created the KKK, the, Gim the Democrat party created Jim Crow laws. The Democrat Party pushed and kept for segregation and hanging and killing of other people, whether it was black people and because, you know, we don't like to talk about this, but I'm going to talk about it. And the white people who pushed for the sustaining of blacks, who 
fought for the sustaining and freedom and open uh, respect for blacks, the nigger lovers, as they would call them in them times, because there were whites who were hung and killed right along with blacks. Understand that. And it was the party of the Democrat Party. It was the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party who ushered in all of that. So for that, I could never, in good conscience, knowing what I know, ever vote for a Democrat Party. You don't want to vote for the Republicans? Fine. Per- cool. That's your prerogative. Make something else. Don't vote for them. Because of their history, you don't vote for them because of their history. Make your own, do the other team, don't vote at all. But don't vote for them just because of their history. So let's talk about how their history plays into all this. Lyndon Bain Johnson, as a senator, let's, we going we to bring this up on the screen because I need this to live forever. <laughs> hope y'all got your notebooks you know when you come in here you got to bring out your notebooks and make notes all right i'm gonna pull up this one and i am going to pull up this one Do do do. That's on Reddit. Hmm. All right. Let's let's go. Lyndon Bain Johnson. He's the Democrat that they uh, uh award the credit to signing the uh step colonel. What's up, bros? Step checking in the building, Hotep Nation and Strongs. You, <laughs> baby, you better know it, Gav. <laughs> you better know it. <laughs> Let's get it. Lyndon Bain Johnson, he's accredited, the Democrat who um, signed the Civil Rights Bill and, and allegedly made things that much better for blacks. But no. And here's why 1957, Lyndon Bain Johnson. When was the Civil Rights Act signed, y'all? The, the Civil Rights Act. In the 60s, that was signed that we sang Kumbaya about. In the chat, let me know what year that was signed with Martin Luther King and them. Let me know what year that was. And while y'all put that in the chat, we're going to go ahead and read through this here. 1957, Linda Bain Johnson, and I quote, These Negroes, they're getting pretty uppity these days, and that's a problem for us. Since they've got something now they've never had before, the political pull to back up their uppityness political pull that there was getting to back up their openness was the partnerships that they were gaining with the Republican party and the movements they were getting with the Republican party. Let's go. Now we've got to do something about this. We've got to give them a little something just enough to quiet them down. Not enough to make a difference for if we don't move at all, then their allies, the Republican party will line up against us. And there'll be no way of stopping them. We'll lose the filibuster and there'll be no way of putting a break on all sorts of wild legislation. It'll be reconstruction all over again. Now, what was the reconstruction party? What what was happening during the reconstruction era for blacks and politics? Anybody in the chat knows? Anybody know what was happening? While y'all get those answers, 1964 was the Civil Rights Act that was signed. Lyndon Bain Johnson said what he said in 1957. We got to give them a little bit. Not enough to make a true difference, but just enough to shut them the fuck up. That's what he said in 57. And then we had riots and stuff. That ensued in the 60s. Mm-hmm. 
So he felt this way in 57. He works because you know what takes you changing minds of people. He's the mastermind and he sees what it is. 1957, he says this when signing the 1957 Civil Rights Act. Move forward to 1964. You got the riots and stuff that's partaking, right? LBJ comes on and he says somewhere between 57 and, and 64. I'll have those niggers voting Democrat for 200 years. Now, there's a whole lot of stuff, like as you see in here, for um for reasons that are obvious, at a recent editorial meeting, topic of, cons- of conversation swung towards some of the most shocking things ever said by U.S. presidents. Of course, Lyndon Bain Johnson's name quickly popped up. LBJ, a beer-swilling, blunt-speaking Texan, didn't shy away from using what today we refer to as the N-word. I'm black. Today we refer to it as nigga, because it's nigga, and it'll always be nigga. One sentence often attributed to LBJ, which has gained great fame on the internet, is this. I'll have those niggers voting Democrat for 200 years. Now see... They don't want to say it's his words because it's too harsh. But does this, I'll have these niggers voting Democrat for 200 years. Does that not line up to this? Hey, we got to give them a little bit and then they're moving forward and then check because he's attributed to saying that in the 1960s, I'll have these niggers voting Democrat for the next 200 years. Well, if black folk took a swing, a hard swing in 1965 and beyond at being Democrats. Let's count 1965. To 19 uh, to 2024, let's just call it 2025 from 65 to 25. That's 60 years. That's 60 years, right? Now, how close on the positive side are we to 200 from zero? Would you guys say that we're definitely on a journey of 200 straight years of voting Democrat? If the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step and we're, fuck it, a journey of 200 to 200 years starts with the first day and we are 60 years down, does it not seem as though we are marching on the way to 200 years And it would mean that him saying I'll have those niggas voting Democrat for 200 years. My boy Steph just said it. We one third of the way. We a third of the way. So it seems as they want to say, oh, these words are attributed to him, but there's really no proof. The proof is we are one third of the way. So there's no lesser evil when it comes there. When people mention the Democrat Party is the lesser of the two evils. No, because we call Jim Crow, slavery, hard segregation with animosity applied. Because I'm going to be real. I don't care about segregation. I segregate my, we all self-segregate. We all self-segregate. Liberals 
segregate for the most part from Republicans, Republicans from liberals, jocks from nerds, um, golfs from 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 um the hip hop kids or, or, or whatever. The mean girls from the normal girls, we all segregate. We don't live in a long, elongated uh, row houses that are connected with bunk rooms all together and we walk by each other. We all self-segregate. The problem is, are you respectful to others when you segregate away from people or do you show animosity, disdain, and try to ruin, kill, and and make uh, uncomfortable other people? Is that what you're doing? Because if that's what you're doing, then that's the problem. But I don't mind segregation because some people just click with people of a like elk and they want to be in that space together and that is okay. There's nothing wrong with it. The problem comes when you sabotage others from moving forward, which is what the Democrat Party was strong at doing. Now, the same thing that's happening now, as you mentioned earlier, about history repeating itself. The countless Republicans that were run out of office because the Dems in the 1800s, they are documented. And those Republicans that were ran out of office in the 1800s because of the Dems were black Republicans. The same thing that happens now as a black uh, identify, right, and affiliated, that's a better word. An affiliated Republican that is black, myself, can go into a Democrat room wearing a MAGA hat and they're going to pounce, trounce, and denounce. But I, a black man that rocks a dashiki, a black man that rocks the Marcus Garvey black liberation flag, can walk into a Republican room and hold power? So my, I'm black y'all and I'm black y'all and I'm bliggity bliggity black y'all, black y'all. They're going to kick me out wearing a MAGA hat for, 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 for wearing my proud boy hat. But I could wear my dashiki over here and not get any type of, I get position of power. Sounds like the Democrat Party are still the segregationists. They're still the ones who are willing to dish out the hate and be right. No, I wouldn't be there with them. I couldn't be there with them. Not in good faith. Not in seeing that how people tell me that they're the party of the little man and they're supposed to help people get ahead and all of this. And every city where I see they lead is a shithole. It's a shithole. I'm supposed to believe that they're the best at helping the people and yet everywhere they have is a shithole. I'm just trying to figure this out. Somebody help me. Cause I don't see it. Now, do the menace clan. You may be black, but I'm a blacker. Something, something. Uh, 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 something, something. Let's kill a cracker. 
Yeah, you have those people out there. You have those people out there. You know why you have those people out there? Because they're harboring hate and animosity because of something that was done to them, done to a family member. Do I think that they should just, that there should just be go hunt a cracker? No, I don't I have some great white friends in my life. I have some great white family members in my life. I love people. Doesn't matter your color. I love people, especially when you show me that you care about the well-being and the growth of my family and my dreams. Period. Now, are there some crackers out there? I mean, some some vile, despicable, nasty crackers out there? Hell yeah, just like those nasty, vile, despicable niggas right there. I don't get down with it. I don't, I'm not with it. I'm so not down with it. I'm not even down with the killer nigga movement. We just going to hunt a nigga. Oh, his bitch bad. We going to go take his old lady. Yeah. Oh, he got money. We going to go raw this nigga. I'm not for that either. I like killing for two reasons and two reasons only. To eat and to defend. And when I say defend, when you are aggressing and impeding on my well-being, on my on my life, on my safety, or anyone within my sphere, that's when it's a time to kill. Outside of that, I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it. So no, I don't. I don't care about. Or excuse me, let me not say I don't care because I do care because if they were to hurt someone, then it would be time to get down. But just to openly just give my, no, I'm not with that. And I won't. But this ain't about the blacker, blacker, go kill a cracker. These about the no good crackers that run the Democrat Party. And to some points, run the Republican Party. Because we see right now very heavily Very heavily. <laughs> oh man. Uh okay. Jonah, I understand, but yeah, I I we know you're quoting the song, but you you brought up a valid question because there are some dudes who feel like, you know, we got to kill a cracker. And I don't get down with that. Justine was on point. She says to to eat and live. Absolutely. Um But let's talk about the Republicans though, because there are Republicans right now. Who are, I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real. And I can, I'm going to speak on this because I can speak on this. Um, you have Republicans who are scared of uh, black folk in power. You have Republicans who are scared of black folk truly getting power. They don't know what's going to happen. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to be real. This is what I believe it is. Just in looking and seeing. Shouts out to Red Bull. It's cracking a can, bitch. <laughs> um, there's a lot of white people who feel like when blacks get in power, when they do gain, if they ever gain the uh, majority power, they think that there's a lot of get back. They think that there's a lot of get back that's going to come down the lane. And uh, I can see why they would feel that way. But if you move to foster a relationship now, that wouldn't be a problem. Wouldn't be a problem. Wouldn't be a problem at all. Because you'll be in a fostered a relationship. Let me see something. Let me make sure X is running. I just thought about that. We're supposed to be over on X. I don't know if X is running like it's supposed to. Anybody over there can let me know. 
any of the homies over there can let let me know. Let me know. All right. It says it's supposed to be. Mike, you got me right, pimp? Oh, I think we running. I see I got some notifications over there. But that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I think I check. I got to make sure we right, family. Bear with me because, you know, we got to be everywhere we can be, like in the Army. Oh, no, that's be all that you can't be, right? All right. Oh, yeah. All right. I think we're running on X. I got a spinny circle. Oh, did they quit? Did they quit? Did they did they lock me down over there? I didn't even play any. I didn't even play anything that couldn't even be played. Or maybe I did. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. We'll figure out X later on. They're gonna have to uh they're gonna have to visit us on YouTube and Rumble and and shouts out to the people over on Facebook. We be trying, man. You know, they really don't like these messages. I'm trying to figure out and y'all please pinpoint me back to where I got to go after I say this. I own a whole internet radio station. I have a whole ass cap license. I am licensed to play music. Steph says X is live. Okay, cool. Um <laughs> I'm going to show y'all what Joe said in a second. If you're not in Rumble, man, Rumble Rumble is funny. Uh, X is live. Um, YouTube is dope, too. And then my people over on Facebook. It's just a smorgasbord. I'm go- you know what? Next week, I will have it. I will put it up over there next week. We're going to have a whole new layout next week. I'm going to um, incorporate everybody's chat. I said that I was going to do that last week. That was something I forgot to do this week. It was so much going on. But I'll have it next week. I promise you. Because I love all my family all over the place. YouTube, Rumble, Facebook. I'm going to figure out how to put X comments on there. Mike says, I'm good. It's just loading, just slow loading. Oh, okay. All right. That works. Well, shouts out to all the X fam over there, man. Y'all come over to YouTube and Rumble, though. Um, that's where all the fun is at. But, um, yeah, I need everybody to to meet and connect and comment and talk to each other on the side on the comment over there. So we're going to make that happen. Hold, I'm hold, hold me to that. Um, or well, something else. Why is that even still bothering me? I don't know. Anyway, do not fall for the banana in the tailpipe when it comes to the Republicans and the Democrat foolishness. All right, because they will literally lead you astray because there are fucked up people on on and leading both parties all right fucked up people lead that don't want to see certain people get in power pay attention to the platforms then use the platforms to advance yourself simple all right Use the platforms to advance yourself. If you have the most numbers in said area and they're leading up, okay, put it this way. Why do I align with the Republican Party, even though there's people who don't want to see blacks in power because uh, (laughs) Gabby says somebody joined on Facebook. Facebook is hating on me right now. Gav, did you get the notification? Cause they're hating, they're hating big time. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that I will not be on Facebook come November. Won't be on Facebook come November. Cause there's no way, there's no way that, you know, not Facebook, not Facebook. So they're just showing me that I'm on my way out the door. That's just what that is. And it's okay. They got rid of me in 2020. I, I'm I'm expecting it to come by election 2024 for sure. But, you know, despite. Okay, good. You got a notification. Um, despite the, the, the craziness and the haters up top, if you, because it's a game of numbers, if you join in these parties and, and if you, I hear people saying, don't vote, not going to vote X, Y, Z, 
Re- then go ahead and relinquish your citizenship then. Relinquish your citizenship. Because if you relinquish your citizenship, you can operate outside of this. But if you're going to operate inside of this, if you're going to own a business with an LLC, uh, an INC, uh, you're going to do DBA, you're going to get paychecks, you're going to do any of that, you have to be a citizen. And a major responsibility in being a citizen a Mike Fresh over there with you, Gav. He over there on Facebook with you now. You got somebody with you. Um, if you're going to be a citizen, if you're going to cash checks, if you're going to travel on intrastate ro- roads, all right, relinquish your citizenship and see how that does. See about getting your your travel card, if you would. And I will say now, a lot of people like to beat up on the whole. So there's a reason why under Obama, when people started learning about their true sovereignty and true status, and that's a conversation we can have at a later date, they determined that the sovereign citizen movement were terrorists. There's a reason that happened. They do not want you to know the true truth. I've been studying. One day I will. One day I will, but I want to be well-versed because when you open that book, well, that's a whole new book to operate under, a whole new book to operate under, and you better know what you're doing or you'll be in trouble. But most people don't want to go through that, so you got to keep your citizenship. And if you're going to keep your citizenship, you have a voice. You have a voice that you must use, and you need to learn how to use it. Pro uses it very well. I'm always at the Board of Education telling them about their behinds, City Hall telling them about their behinds, communicating with city leaders even outside of a city hall because I know my responsibility. I know my responsibility. And that's what I want you guys to know. See, Gavi said the same thing, man. It's hard work, but it is, it's so worth it. But you got to be ready. <laughs> this is one of them. You got to be ready when you jump off that poach. And I don't put my toes in the water, but I ain't jumped all the way off yet. I want to. I want to uh I want to master this. I want to fight in this as long as I can. And whenever this fails, I know that I can hit my parachute on that and I can be good. And that's why I tell people, you know, hey, look into um look into getting your hard assets and and building your own. Look, we we could talk prep prep talk another t- another time. Another time. And shout out to my brother, man. Shaka Shakur and my brother got dang on Amaru, man, and the whole team over there cuz look, they open, whew, boy, they opened a brother whole another whole new world when it came to a lot of stuff. And they got me on the prep, prep, prep tip. So shouts out to them brothers, man, for real, man. Real talk. But getting back into this political game, it's a game of numbers. And these people, as long as you have a U.S. citizenship, as long as you are registered to vote, They are moving with your consent in your name. So everything they do for the United States of America is in your name. Any and everything. So I need you to understand that and I need you to act and move accordingly. If that means infiltrating in, um, If that means, okay, Gav, I will. If he got space, I don't know, he might have space because a lot of people got mad. <laughs> we'll talk about that. I want to get him on the show one day. He wanted to get me on his, and since he asked me before I can ask him, I was 
kind of like, you know, hanging back to not get him on, but I don't went through a whole year and I ain't had him on yet. Bros, you're getting your ass on here by midsummer. So get your schedule right. I know you be going live at like three in the morning. We're going to get your schedule right so you can get over here because the people need to hear from you because we got some shit to talk about, especially some of the stuff that I'm willing to talk about tonight. So, um, but yeah, these people have arranged this system to be a two party system. They've put it that way in law. So we have to operate in that within law until we can get said law changed. That's just what it is. So when they say, man, why are you getting a Republican party? Well, the Republican party is talking that shit that I want to hear. I want to better my kids' education. I want fiscal responsibility, not just throwing money away to throw money away. I want to be able to keep my guns. I want to go after my own businesses and free enterprise and not get screwed over by bureaucracy and regulations. Okay? I want minimal government. I don't believe the government should be as bloated as it is. That's why we have all these bridges to nowhere. That's why Ukraine is getting billions upon billions upon billions of dollars. That's why we have these people coming through the border because the government is entirely, entirely too damn bloated. So I'm going after those principles now. Excuse me. Now. Does everybody think that way and move that way in the party? No, they don't. And that's an issue. That's an issue that I am willing to address. But I can only address it where I am home. Because I can only vote for the representatives where I am home. That means I have to start a coalition with other people who think like-mindedly and see how I can help them help build where they are at home so we can have more people who think and move that way as a coalition. It doesn't matter. That's why I love Hotep Nation. We are all spread out. But we all on our HNB tip. HNB for all my hotels in the chat, bro. HNB in the chat for all my hotels in the chat. We want better. How do you get better? You communicate, you study, you learn. Be peaceful in it. You be steady in it. And you build. And that's what we do. That's what we do. So I'm appreciative of that. And I'm going to do that. Shouts out to the chat, man. Way go in the chat. Hotep and Bill. Steph in the chat. Hotep and Bill. Fresh Mike in the chat. Hotep and Bill. G Nick for protocol. Excuse me. H Nick. <laughs> But that's what we have to do, guys. And we got to use, we got to do it the best way that we can. And the ones who are putting in the legislation and putting forth the legislation that is going to help our community and our people build. Help them be stronger. Help them be better. Is voting to chop off little, uh, chopping off little boys, uh, uh, danglings and telling them that they can, 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 uh, Compete against our girls? Is that going to help build strong people? Is that going to help build a strong, uh, better uh, uh, 
community and future for us. We got homeless people in the streets. Our own people are homeless and sleeping on, on benches and sleeping in tents in the park. From, from all ranges of, of, of situations, from mental health to down on a dick to my house caught on fire and I don't have a family. To I had shitty ass landlords and my job just is making it, but I can't get nowhere now because I got to make three times the amount of rent in order to get there. I just am making enough to pay for rent, bills and food. Now you're telling me I need to make three times the rent in order to get there. So now me and my kids are forced to live in a hotel till we can't live in a hotel no more. And now I have to sleep in my car. Now I have to sleep in my car. Hold on, guys. The great the great debater is commenting instead of messaging me as he was instructed to. That's boy, what the fuck? Uh-uh. Y'all mine. I'm at work and my phone does not have messenger. That's now we're having the 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 okay. Well, uh, <laughs> what's your email? Look, y'all, I mean, dude challenged me for the debate, y'all. And now, you know, I don't know. Now it's, oh, I don't have Messenger. Oh, I'm at work. My phone's on the charge. Like, I told you my show started at 8 o'clock on Friday earlier this week when you issued the challenge. Anyway, let's get back to talking about the fact that we have the homeless in the streets and these people who don't have anywhere to stay and they can't get no help from the local government, but the local government can house these illegals who ain't never paid a fucking sales tax, ain't never paid nothing towards a house tax, ain't never paid an extra splos tax, ain't never, ain't did nothing here on this land, ain't paid a one income tax or nothing. Nothing. And they get to go to the Ritz Carlton. They get hotels bought out, shut down, and blocked off from the public for them. And they won't even do that for our homeless veterans who lost their fucking mind and some of them their limbs to protect democracy. You can't even put them in a place proper to stay and get out of here with that foolishness. I'm not voting for that. I'd rather vote for this over here. And it's just that simple. And anybody who feels elsewhere about that can kiss my black ass. Own gang. Yeah, Gabby, we tried to tell them. They didn't want to hear it. They... Did not want it. The problem was. You can't handle the truth. They couldn't handle the truth. They couldn't handle the truth. And truth be told. When it comes to the people who are around us. That are still voting for these idiots. Guys. I'm surrounded by idiots. Point blank period bro. That's what we got. Got a bunch of people who can't handle the truth. And they're just idiots. Surrounded by them idiots. Yes we are. Guys, hit the like button, man. Hit that share, 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 man. There are people who need to be in here in this conversation, man. Tell them, Pro say, come on up in here, man. They late, but that's all right. We'll allow them, you know, a little bit of uh, tardiness, you feel me? We'll allow them the, the little bit of tardiness. Yeah, Gravy, it's getting real bad, and we're going to see what happens as we move further with that. Um, So my mission is, you know, Fuck the people in the Republican Party who don't like black people. Fuck the people who want to talk about, you know, uh, the DEIs. And, and it, oh, I got to hit this and then we going on. I got to hit this and then we going on, y'all. Because it, it's just been bothering me about this whole red, black, black, white conversation this week. Um, and and <sighs> the red whites were going really, really hard on the mayor of um, Baltimore calling him a DEI mayor and, and whatever. And I'm going to be honest, guys. I got to be real. I have to be real. 
in the frame of what DEI is mentally, what we hear and how we hear them talk about it, um, the dude was a DEI mayor. Now, he wasn't DEI hired, all right? He was not a DEI hire, but he was DEI voted. Bro, what do you mean he was DEI voted? Glad you asked. He was the black young mayor. He was the hip hop mayor because he looks young. He looks, he doesn't look like he's in his 40s. He looks like he's in his, oh, well, almost 50s, like he's in his 30s. Because black don't crack. We know this. Sorry, guys. Somebody might say that's racist. They may feel hurt. It's the fucking truth. I put my 80 old lady versus your 80 old ladies any day of the week. I do it any day of the week. I put my 80 old men against your 80 old men any day of the week. Just saying. Black don't crack. But in any event, on to what I was saying. <laughs> oh, man. Um. Okay. Ron brought something else to the table. He's the first mayor in recent Baltimore history that hasn't had a federal indictment. And up until this point, you're absolutely correct. Could it be down the line? We don't know. Anything a DEI elected mayor, it's, again, he was the young black dude with hipness and had a backing, right? And it was this old black lady in the Republican Party. Now, I'd have to see all the people he was going against as well. He was also already a councilman, right? So that helps because he's he's a councilman. He's already on, on council, and he's young, and he's hip, right? So you have the DEI mindset of, yeah, we're going to put this young black dude up here. You're already in a black city. I'm not going with the black old Republican lady because, God, she's an old black Republican lady. And you're in a blue city. A blue city. Hell yeah, we finna put the young dude up against this old black lady and we gonna make sure he get in there because we need the youngins. Dude, I know I'm in a city right now. I'm in a city right now. Now, starting, all right, so my uncle was the very first black mayor of this city of Savannah, the very first. I'm going to go a rundown of the mayors that we've had since then. My uncle, Lloyd Adams, first black mayor, top of the 90s. He did a couple of years after him. Otis Johnson, the second black mayor. Again, we're in a city that is 52 to 59% black, depending on who you ask and when you ask as well, because there's a difference between the city limits and the county limits and the population. But I digress. Floyd Adams, first. Otis Jackson, second black mayor. Edna Jackson, first black woman mayor. And might I say, Floyd Adams, Otis Johnson. No, he may have went in. He went in with Otis. So Otis Johnson, Otis Johnson, Edna Jackson, Edna Jackson. She did, no, she did one term. Edna Jackson, Eddie DeLoach, white. So we got black, 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 white, Eddie DeLoach, black, current, Van Johnson. Five black mayors. Oh, excuse me. Four black mayors out of the last five mayors. All right. Eddie was put in because Eddie's mom, Eddie was known in the black community. All right. He was like, he was acceptable. He's a white boy that was acceptable. All right. Mom was a teacher in the black community. Eddie owns a, a, a landscape company that has done big work in the black community. I'm talking about hiring felonious off the muscle. No questions asked. Come get a good job. Handle business. That's what, that's what Eddie is known for. Everybody already knew, but Eddie, the cool white boy, Eddie get to come to the cookout. This is how we operated. Same way with Trump. You know, he was cool. We can come to the cookout. 
Then Trump got in office. Trump got in office and the Democrats and the idiotic blacks liken Eddie DeLoach to Donald Trump. Mike Pence came during the situation that exacerbated, exacerbated everything. And they went from saying, hey, he the cool white boy till to he's the Trump white boy and he got to go. And then that's how we ended up with this idiot that we have as mayor right now, who was an incumbent. He served as District 1 councilman in Savannah. Okay. Everybody, even though he did a horrible job in his district, his district hated him. We have letters with all the neighborhood association presidents who were actively voting against this guy, campaigning against this guy. He still got in on in the cheat, and um he's been there. And it was only because we need the black man mail. Same thing with old boy. We need the young black man mail. Oh, he cool with Cardi. Oh, he got this person doing a commercial. That's the mindset. Not in the sense of we know over in Hotep Nation has we've broken down DEIs just like the breaking down of BLM that it's not about this and especially this, this. Nah. It's about the ta ta right? It's about the chop-chops. It's about the people in the rainbow. That's what DEI is a whole as they move is, a, is about. But there's an underlying to DEI, just like there's an underlying in BLM when it comes to the mindset of the black community. And that is, hey, we got to get our brother in there. Hey, we got to get our sister in there. Not a one who really us, not the other one, but the one who us. That's how who that's who we got to get in there because they not letting black succeed anyway. So we got to take it how we can take it. That's the mindset. That's the DEI when it comes to us mindset. And some people understand that. So although I see the stupid red whites in the DEI and DEI is basically say another way of saying nigga. And you know what? I ain't gonna lie. I might start using DEI a lot more and replace a nigga. Just like we say no diddy instead of pause now. We say no diddy. And pro was first to say no diddy. It's fact. It's fact. Pro was first. Everybody running with it now, but pro was first. It's undisputable facts. If you don't believe me, you better ask somebody who know or go do some research. I promise you, you'll see pro was first. Oh, oh, he's came. Hey, guys, guess who popped up, guys? All right. I, want, I still want you to come in. Oh, Lord, my guy, you wrote a whole dissertation. We got to move this over. We got to move this over here. Oh, man. Can you call in? Are, are you able to call in? Are you able to call in? Because you can call in and we can talk this out. We can talk this out. Let me know if you can call in. Um, and, and you let me know if you can call in. And I'll, I'll jump back to that in a second. Um, I got to run through these other things. Hmm, we got stuck in the whole red white thing. But anyway, fuck that. We going to build. Democrats ain't shit. They don't want us to truly have nothing. As a party, they don't want us to truly have nothing. At least with the Republicans, we can have something. We can get in there, infiltrate, put the 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 the, the kibosh on on people stopping us from owning, own our stuff, secure our communities, build, understand the process, get in there, build our own party if that's what we choose to do, and get ballot access and get the people that we need in these offices. Not these DEI hires, not these people who playing the game of the game and, and letting these other people get rich and shit. We don't want them. We don't need them. It's about we the people. Let's get the we the people party started. Can we get that going on? One in the chats, if y'all down, we're getting the we the people party started. All right. Okay. Now, while I wait for him to let me know whether or not he can jump in, I want to talk about this right quick, man. I got a few things I got to jump in, and I'm not going to have four hours before call-in, guys, all right? I'm not going to have four hours before call-ins. We're going to get this thing crack like it's supposed to be. Fresh Mike, where you at, man? Where my partner at, man? We got a big show. We got a big show on Sunday, man. Shane Cashman. That's right. The Shane Cashman. You've seen him on uh, 
You've seen him on Tim Pool a lot, a whole lot. Shane coming in with us on Sunday, man. We finna have some dope ass conversations. All right. Y'all come on in, man. He got some novel. He got a Kanye novel that he wrote. And it's been approved by Kanye, and he's releasing it exclusively on X as Threads. So I guess I suggest that you guys um go over there and check that novel out, man. All right, so let me pull this up. So we got a situation. You guys all know about this situation right here. Oh, yeah, we're going to see. I hope he's still in there, man. Mr. Malak Koli. Is it, is it Malak Koli? I don't want to. I'm going to call you Mr. Koli. Mr. KL. Mr. KL. You still in here, my guy? I hope he's still in here. Okay. So, I know you guys have heard that um, NYC Appeal Court uh, has cut Trump's bond to $175 million in the fraud case, holding off his property seizure. All right. A New York appeals court showed Donald Trump some mercy money, allowing him to post a $175 million bond rather than a nearly half a billion dollar bond to ward off foreclosures while he fights the outcome of his civil fraud case. In a brief order, a five judge panel at the first department. I think he's still here. I see something. Yep. He's still here. You don't research a person, you unreasonably assume that person in question is not racist. That is what every Asiatic person do when it comes to Trump. Trump only deals with people that can benefit him, especially Asiatic people. So, Nick, so guess what? I'm glad you said that. Trump, oh, we'll, we'll talk about that. Tell me, can you call in? I just want to know, can you call in and when you're available to call in and we can talk about it? All right. But that's the art of the deal. And that's the that is the point of reciprocity. If you can't go in there and negotiate what you need and come out of there with what you need as a person, then you ain't even a real man, bro. And that's something that I do and can do. And I do it often. I go in the building. I negotiate what I want. I get my bills pushed through. If it has to go through bill, if it comes to an executive privilege, I go get what I want through executive privilege and I come back and I put it to work. If you ain't on the ground putting it into work, then none of that shit means nothing. Let me know if you can call in. Let's get back to this. These people tried to get this man for a, a half a billion dollars. All right. The ward off foreclosures while he fights the outcome of his silver fraud case. They literally in this case, right? They said that, okay, Trump owns Mar-a-Lago. He told us Mar-a-Lago was worth this. We don't think Mar-a-Lago is worth that. We think Mar-a-Lago is worth this. And what we say is what it's worth. Period. Full stop. He lied to the bank. He committed fraud to the bank. We don't like it. We're coming at him. He's guilty. If I go to Circle K where I purchased these Red Bulls for three for eight dollars, and they told me their price was three for eight dollars, and I paid them the eight dollars. That's my choice. I can't go to them and say, hey, these really should be three for a dollar. So they're three for a dollar. And you're going to take a dollar and I'm going to take all three of them. Where does that make sense? Especially when we're in a situation to where the man takes his property, says it's worth this. He needs a loan for this. I'll pay you your money back with interest. If I don't, you take my property. He gets the money. He makes his money. He gives them their money. They say, oh, okay, appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Do business again with you soon. Everybody's happy. Some far off arbitrator comes and say, nah, you lied, nigga. How you going to tell them that that's worth that? Well, that's what it's worth to me. It's worth this to me. And to them, it seems to be worth that too. So much that they let me borrow this much just in the case because I'm going to be real. 
I'm going to be so real with you. When it comes to a loan and a person loans you money and they use something for collateral, when they get that collateral, a lot of times they hope you don't come back because they're going to make more money off of the collateral than what they loaned you. Think about when you go to the pawn shop and you go pawn your TV that you spent $700 on and they say, (coughs) yeah, man, you know, them cigarettes was getting to me, but, uh, you got to excuse that. (coughs) But I see this here TV and, uh, I ain't let you buy about $150. $150? Yeah, $150. You need the money. You need the $150. Now, you know, I'm going to hold it for you in the back. Yeah, I ain't going to sell it. You can bring me $150 back and you can get it. And then you don't bring them the $150 back. And you go in there a month later and your TV that they lent you $150 on is being sold for $450, $500. They hope you didn't come back with that $150, $175 with interest so they can go double the price and sell it. That's what they look for. So when this person comes and says, oh, Trump, you lied about your property. You defrauded those people. How? They accepted it and they got their money back. I never had a problem with not paying them their money. They got their money back with interest. They're even willing to come in here and tell you they're ready to work with me again. You got a judge and an AG that are partnered together to bankrupt a political opponent all the way to the point to where they're controlling the worth of that person's property. Ain't that something? Now, see, it's all fun and games when they're doing it to President Trump. But guess what? My pop say, ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Check this out. Hmm. Did you know there is a court case happening in probate court right now in Savannah to stop the sale of a cultural pillar black business in Savannah, Georgia? Tricks barbecue. Hmm. A judge is going to determine whether or not the property should be allowed to be sold by the conservator of the property. This involves two prominent black families, the tricks family and the gin family. This represents the continuing erasure of black business in Savannah and the dismantling of black wealth in the city. Tricks barbecue located in historic bull street, which has been known to have predominantly black-owned businesses in the past and will now be almost completely gentrified once the property of Trix is sold. This deeply saddens me that this judge and his conservator do not see the value of protecting both of these families' legacies and wealth, as well as preserving the disappearing black culture and the ongoing gentrification of Bull Street. I happily support both these families, and I've asked the mayor and the older woman to get involved in this case. They will rule today, and we will find out if one of the longest standing black business pillars in this community will exist. This is truly an atrocity. I also believe the judge is up for re-election and has an opponent. Shouts out to Tricks Barbecue. This is making its rounds in the city. This is making its rounds in the city. You got people talking. The comments is very interesting. But here we are. About the value of the property. 
what it means to particular people and a judge who's disregarding it. So they say. But I can assure you, I can assure you, the person that they asked to help, Mayor Van Johnson, oh, he's a Democrat butt boy. Old woman, a less, uh, uh, Estella Shabazz, oh, man, she is, mm. She she is as blue as that sky that you see in that picture right there. They're all blue. The person who wrote this blue. Yes, Kamala. Yes, girl. They're the same people who are clapping and pushing and clapping and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing for Trump to lose all of his wealth, for Trump to lose his businesses, for them to determine what the business is and isn't worth. Yet they're... It's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Y'all know the song. And now they crying. And now they hurt. Feelings hurt. So guys, you got to be careful. You got to be careful of the things that you clap for and the things that you approve and that you let happen. Because as I said, my father always says, ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. And the rabbit got the gun on this one. Y'all gave the rabbit the gun. Y'all said it was okay for him to do this. And now here they are. I want y'all to check this, this hoodie out. Let me make it a little bit bigger for you. Shouts out to Marge Torrey and Black Guns Matter. That's where I got this hoodie from. It's a cool hoodie, don't you think? I know somebody who couldn't be, maybe, and may not be watching this stream right now, who's highly upset with this hoodie. But I love this hoodie. It's my favorite hoodie. Next to these two hoodies. So I got three favorite hoodies right now. So we have this one. All right. It says uh, Trump 2024. And then it has a. Uh, my favorite. Do, 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 do. Yep, right here. Trump twenty twenty four. Trump forty five forty seven. Yep. And uh, that was special. That was a, a Christmas gift. And then I have this one. Has one of my favorite sayings on it. This is like one of my this is like my everyday hoodie right here. It says uh You know what I'm saying? It says fuck Antifa. Not only does it say fuck Antifa. It has the greatest frat in the world. Yep, definitely my my everyday hoodie. Yep, I got to find the arm for you. <laughs> Make a nice subtle statement, right? Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, 
because I am. So those are these are my favorite hoodies out here in these streets. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I'm a hoodie guy. I love them to death. I like making subtle statements with my clothing. <laughs> yeah. Also, speaking of subtle statements, yo, um, t-shirts, hoodies, all of those for sale, man. You can check those out. The links in my link tree. Um, I might share some of those with y'all later on, man. Y'all get y'all some merch, man. We got the Friday Night Flights merch. We got the uh, Breaking News Pro Set It. Um, we got some other things. We got shirts, hoodies, hats, cups, um, teddy bears. We got all kind of stuff, man. So check that out. <coughs> all right. Let's see here, man. I'm going to fly through these other things right quick. And I want to see if my guy is going to say he's going to call in. If not, I'm going to go to his comments. We're going to see what he said. But um, we're going to see if he tapped out. He might be scared. I, I might be more pro-black than he thought. He might have thought I was Candace Owens and he realized, oh, this is a real hotel nigga. Let me get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Let me get the fuck out of here. I ain't, I ain't going to win. All right, let's see here. Let's talk about this. This was a... Uh, This was pretty cool. Mm, yeah. Well, no, I'll hold her. I'll hold her. We talk about that. We talk about that. Um. Hmm. 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 Yeah, he seemed to have chickened out, Justine. He seems to. I don't know. He said he was at work. Maybe he's still listening. So I, I will give the brother the benefit of the doubt. I haven't seen him pop up in the comments anytime recently, though. But And he still hasn't answered. Hold on. Let me check. He still hasn't answered whether or not he can call in. All he's talked about was the Asiatic people, which was a long ass comment when all I asked was, are you able to call in? So, you know, hey, I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this all to all my Savannah people. We're gonna we're gonna hit, you know, we're gonna stick in Savannah for a little while. Um Chub, 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 chub. All right, guys. So, Abercorn, y'all. Abercorn is shut down. Something happened. There is some road integrity over there on Abercorn. <coughs> there is some road integrity over there. They had an issue. They had to shut down um, uh, southbound lane on Abercorn between 52nd and 54th. Um. So, you guys uh, be... Uh, If you headed south on Abercorn, man, they are going to make you duck off on 52nd and go down Bull Street or possibly go down Habersham Street and then come back up to Abercorn off 54th. Um, all northbound, though, all northbound is uh is good to go. So for now, I hope they, um, man, do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? WTOC staff. All right. I know who wrote this. AI wrote this. They say it was WTOC staff, right? But AI wrote this. Look. According to eh? Yeah. AI wrote this. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all got to do better, WTOC. You know, I used to love y'all. Now y'all some bullshit out here in these streets, man. I don't know. All right. Um... Mr. KL, Justine wants you to know, man, I'm definitely giving you the benefit of the doubt. And if you're reading this, sir, we're always respectful and it's all jokes. Yeah, man, I'm always respectful until I'm not respectful. As long as you keep it respectful, I stay respectful. But as soon as you step off that deep end, as Akon says, and shh, I know y'all, okay, please don't, please. But he said a very great line. If you ever cross that line, I guarantee you there'd be nothing to save you. <clears throat> we'll talk about Akon in a little while. Oh, we'll talk about Akon in a little while. Okay. But anyway, I want to get through the, the nice light stuff first. Okay. Let's see what else we got going on over here. We talked about that. Um, Let's talk about this. Because this is vastly approaching. <clears throat> So we know spring break season is 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 fully among us, right? Well, 
Savannah is a is a beach city. Um, we have a beach town, if you would. So Savannah is like the metropolis city. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have our outlying cities. Um, and Tommy Island is one of our outlying cities. It is the Savannah Beach City. Um, Tommy Island, Georgia. And you know, beach, spring break, spring break, beach, like your MTV kids, you already know, man. A beach and spring break goes hand in hand. Well, we've been having our own little beach event going on around here for the better part of 40 years. Um, and the folk on Tommy Island said, we fed of this shit. We fed up. We done. <clears throat> so they have created a budget. Now, they spent... 187000 so far preparing for spring break events on the island. Money they said that they're not prepared to spend, but they're willing to spend. They had a meeting last night, and at that meeting, uh, city asked council to amend it from 187 to $250,000 in expenses. A quarter of a million dollars just for spring break alone. And not particularly just spring break, but more so Orange Crush. Any guys in the chat, anybody familiar with Orange Crush? Y'all ever heard the name Orange Crush before? Famous beach party down here in Savannah, Georgia? It's a time. Y'all think Freak Neek is something. Man, listen, it's Freak Neek little cousin. It's freak neat little further south cousin. That's that's what Orange Crush is. Um, and and then people say that they are not with it. Um, next week, you know what? Next week, guys, we will do an ode to Orange Crush. That's what we'll do next week, and I'll give you a complete rundown. I'll talk about what happened. We'll talk about Tybee Island and everything that it is. So. Let me put that in my notes right now as I find out where the heck I put my pen at. That's my great writing pen. That's even. We'll do a whole breakdown. All right. So um, we're still trying to refine our budget, but there are some things that we need to commit to have them in time. Things like barricades and forced parking plan. Um, the council did ultimately approve the $250,000 budget expansion, and those extra funds will be coming from the city special events funding. <clears throat> they're not going to be too happy about that because they're already upset about them having to uh, deal with this unplanned special event. So that's going to be interestingly fun. Yeah. Moving right along, my friends. Y'all um, who plan on going out the top of the island, y'all just be careful, okay? Y'all just be careful because it's just going to get crazy. All right. Let's talk about this right here. We just had something called sign die. Anybody knows what sign die is? Anybody ever heard of sign die before? And the Georgia legislator or any uh any legislator. Mm -mm -mm. You guys probably haven't heard of it before, so we're gonna go ahead and bust it off like this right here, guys. Sign die. Final results on bills that passed or failed in the 2024 legislative session. Sign die is the last day of the 2024 legislative session. Lawmakers spend all day and all night to vote on bills. This is the last day that bills introduced in, the se in this particular session can be voted up or voted down. It's the last day. So if it don't get it passed, sign die. Oh, good job. Better luck next session. So sign die was yesterday. And there were a couple of bills that did and didn't make it. Um, oh, that's not the right one. Where is it? 
Well, that sucks. Okay, let's get in here. There's a sports betting bill that was put in, right? For us to be able to use FanDuel and DraftKings. All all of them are currently illegal in the state of Georgia. So if you guys are doing DraftKings or anything in Georgia, I just want you to know you're taking a risk. And if they decide to kick in your dough and come get you or come for your money, um, then, yeah, this is it. Oh, man. Oh, here we go. He says uh, he he's commenting still, guys. He's still here. He very much wished that he could join in this one sided discussion. Dude, I, I'm at work. I was really hoping that today was one of my slow work days. One time Sunday, I really want to dialogue with you, Asiatic people for white supremacy. You and multiple others are teaming with multiple openly white supremacy groups note i am listening intently to your twisted reasoning i do not have all the apps on my phone but i'm clearly available saturday and sunday 8 15 oh oh okay cool i won't put that on the screen oh i did put it on the screen um uh what did he say um again i am not affiliated with any party organization nor do i desire to attempt to persuade anyone to vote a selected way i refute open lies and add my perspective based on the facts that i believe that i have huh okay very much wish I could join this one-sided discussion. It, of course, it's one-sided. It's one person talking, and that's the person whose show this is. But you were openly invited, and as you say now, you have to work, but it's okay. Friday night flights is a Friday show. Saturday, I have a break. Sunday, I do have a show with my partner, Fresh Mike. It's called Rumble on Rumble. Um, can't do this Sunday because we had a guest this Sunday, but you know what? I'll talk to Mike, and maybe, possibly... I don't know. We'll work this out. You know, you can come on the show. Mike can moderate and you know, everything is everything. How does that sound? Mike, Mike, does that sound like a win on Sunday? We get him in on rumble on rumble. Maybe next week, maybe, maybe in a couple of weeks. <coughs> Definitely not this Sunday though. Nah. We'll talk about it. <clears throat> But um, there's always one side to the truth, though. That's, that's just how that works. Um, and as I stated before, I would rather, and, and you, you wasn't here yet, obviously, so I'm going to rewind this just a little bit for you. And then I'm going to get through my stuff so I can open up my phone lines for my fam. I deal with the Republican Party because they are the best option on the table when it comes to the two party political system. I will never you want to talk about white supremacy. The Democrats are the parents of white supremacy. The Democrats are the parents. I will never vote for Jim Crow Joe. There's nothing you can tell me ever that would have me vote for Jim Crow Joe. It's not going to happen. So whatever twisted reasoning you have in your head to vote for Jim Crow Joe as we say in the south bless your little heart cuz I ain't I ain't Mike says let's go so I will text you he's willing to moderate we have a show on Sunday nights called Rumble on Rumble I think it's fitting for you to come over and rumble in the jungle with pro. Because I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. I come to win. I, You play to win the game. And I play to win. All right. Let's get back into what I was saying about sign die. So, yes, y'all. Um, we were part of Georgia. Uh, we had a bet. A betting bill on the table. And, unfortunately, that's crazy. Because... It was doing damn good through the, it was working its way through the legislature and it just seemed to have died because there's a bunch of Republicans who are like, no, you shouldn't bet that's wrong. And, and this is where my problem again, I don't agree with everything in the Republican party. I'm out to change a lot of things. A couple of the things that I'm out to change. I hate the way that a lot of older Republicans think about marijuana. I hate the way that they think about marijuana. Like it's stupid, especially when you say, but I'm a Christian and I'm a God fearing, loving person. And I, okay. If you're God fearing, you're God loving. Then why are you telling me that I can't partake in a plant? Did you not start reading in Genesis? Hmm. 
Did you not read in Genesis? All right, I'm going to take the screen off because I don't want y'all to know because I know it. Who knows the verse in Genesis where it talks about bearing forth your own seed? There's just I'm just going to say that. When a plant bear forth seed, who knows about that in Genesis? Hmm? Hmm? I'm just going to go ahead and bring it up because the comments is mo- moving very slow tonight. It's the very first chapter. The very first chapter. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. The very first chapter, the 29th verse. And that's where the problem comes into play. Because it's so far in the beginning that people do not realize nor recognize that God himself said, I give you. Every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. This Negro said that Joe is the lesser of the two evils. This Negro said the one who created a crime bill to completely decimate the black community is more of an evil than a man who let the same people who was hurt by this crime bill out of jail. This man said the lesser of the two evils is the man who said that you aren't smart enough to teach and handle and articulate an education for your own children. Is the lesser of two evils than the man that is saying, hey, you can take your tax dollars that are your dollars. You earned them. You created them. You, 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 your tax dollars to your child's education. You take that money and you put it into whatever system that you parent for your child that you raise and you deal with every day. You take your money, put it towards your child in the best way that you see fit for your child to be educated. I'm supposed to go against that. I, sir. You can't call in. Let's just save this until you can, because I'm going to decimate you. I suggest you go in the hyperbolic time chamber and get yourself together because I'm over here on my uh, because I can I don't even have to go super saying go cool to beat you, bro. I already know that I'm a saying bloodline. I come from kings and greatness. I already know I'm a saying I don't even have to go super saying to beat you, bro. I don't even think I have to use the KO Ken to beat you, bro. I don't have to. I can come straight up regular saying and just wild out. And I'm going to do that. I will see you on Rumble on Rumble. Now, going back to my conservative Republican brethren who says they're also God based. They love God. They're all about the Bible and the Judeo Christian values. But you have a problem with marijuana. You have a problem. You said it's the devil's whatever, whatever, whatever. And yet God said he made it. It's his plant. It makes a seed. It grows right here. You take a seed, you put it in the dirt, you put some water in it, and you make sure it's in a good sunny area. It's going to reach towards the heavens. It's going to reach toward the sun. And I'm not supposed to deal with that. I'm nice, Mike. I'm saving it for the ring, Mike. I'm I'm saving it for the ring, okay? <laughs> oh man. All right. So Gabby says she's checking in on Sunday. Yo, Sunday will be good. Sunday will be a real good show. He won't be on there this Sunday, though. We're gonna we're gonna get that. I'm gonna give him a call. Since he doesn't have um Facebook Messenger, I'll give him a call and we'll set that up and um 
we'll make sure that uh you know we get a good date and i'll put out a flyer and everything i'll get him a nice little flyer made he could share it to all his people we can put it in a group with uh robert patillo and 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 rashad richie and all the democrat people that are over there who also feel like joe got let's go joe right they all feel let's go joe Joe, we did it, Joe. We get those people in there gonna come in there, and we gonna and we gonna have a good time, and the people gonna be in the chat, and boom, boom, boom. They gonna just battle it out, and it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be the greatest of times because it's gonna be a time. Mm. <laughs> but let's get back to God and the seed, and the Republicans that are so so hard bent on hating marijuana, and it's just a plant. That we consume. Because you consume food. Do you not? You consume food. And the food that you consume. Provides you some type of nourishment. Correct? Well I'm telling you. As a smoker. That I have. Had a lot of nourishment. From smoking. I've had some of my. Greatest. Revelations. While smoking. I've conquered some amazing feats. While smoking. And I love it. 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 Oh. <laughs> Mr. Malaki. Bro, I'm a, y'all know what? Everything. Eh, I'm sorry, bro. I am not jonesing on you. I am not. Okay, okay, maybe just a little bit, but not really. Not because I'm jonesing on you. It's literally because when I see your name, right? Okay, when I, I'm not trying to win likes. I'm just trying to win the minds of logic. That's it. I, and there's nothing logical about saying that Joe Biden is the better choice. There's nothing logical, likable, or none of that. I'm just saying, come bring your people because I don't want you to feel like it's one side and you're getting beat up by my people. I'm just saying, that's all. But when you see this name, right? When I see his name, do you guys know what come to mind when I see his name? And I'm not being funny. I'm I'm being oh so for real. Do you guys know what comes to mind when I see his name? <laughs> Excuse me. We're going to keep going, but I want y'all to know. And I'm not trying to be funny. It just keeps it keeps popping up and it just keeps coming to mind. Every time I every time I see your name, it uh it comes to mind. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm about to show y'all what come to mind. Y'all do not do not beat me up. My dog, I don't mean this to to be harmful. I'm not trying to be harmful or rude or anything to you. I'm just saying. When I see this, when I see your name, I think of this. This is all I think of. Mr. Garvey, I taught school for 20 years in the inner city, so don't even think about messing with me. Y'all feel me? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a roll here. Jay Quellen. Where's Jay Quellen at? No Jay Quellen here? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, do you mean Jacqueline? Okay. So that's how it's going to be. Y'all want to play. Okay, then. I, I got my eye on you, Jay Quellen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dog. I'm sorry. But, like, the way that it's broken up, I, I, this is the first thing that comes to mind, bro. This is the first thing that comes to mind, the way that your name Balake. is broken up. Malaki. Where is Balaki at? The, Bal <laughs> no Balaki here today. <laughs> yes, sir. My name is Blake. Are you out of your goddamn mind? Blake. <laughs> this is what comes to mind, bro. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just, you know. <laughs> hey, that's, hey, man, listen. If it's one thing about pro, and you will come to know, 
as you move further along this journey, if you happen to stick around, you will find out. I have a problem with saying what is definitely on my mind, bro. I, I, I'm I going to do it. I'm going to do it come hella high water. And it tends to get me in trouble a lot. I guess. It makes people mad. I'm not going to say it get me in trouble because I'm grown as hell. But, yeah. <laughs> He's laughing. He's laughing. That's what comes to mind, bro. I'm sorry. Like, I just... I think about this key and P uh, episode the entire time, bro. You know, so yeah. All right, guys, that was, that was, that was it. But nah, bro, we're going to talk on Sunday, man. We're going to, I see where you at. We're going to have an honest conversation. And again, like I say, by the time it's done, you're going to see that, you know, pro is real pro is on some real shit. So yeah, got a problem with Republicans and how they feel about, um, God dang gone marijuana and stuff and they're supposed to be all these god-fearing god-loving christian people but except for don't you mess with that plant it's one of the first things he told me i could fuck with matter of fact he told me i can fuck with everything but the tree of knowledge now if you want to argue that marijuana is the tree of knowledge you might be on something You might be on to something because what I've learned in my um, years of uh, dealing with marijuana is that if you study high mm -hmm, and then you test high, mm -hmm, let me get a help. Let me get a little bit of help in the chat, a little help in the chat. You study high, you test high, you Finish that for me, chat. Finish that for me, chat, while we go into the next conversation. Because, see, the chat going to help me out. Because, see, I know the chat, know that if you study high and you test high, yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and drop that for me. Drop it like it's hot. I know there's a little linger behind in the chat, man. It's okay. It's all right, man. The internet's been all their interwebbing. Okay. Let's go back here to this beautiful uh, sign die. So we got the, 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 the gambling bill that they didn't put through. You know, they killed that because they felt like they were, you know, holier than thou. And, and gambling is so against, you know, the Republican ways because it's against God and all of that crap. And I don't, I don't respect that because tied into the sports betting, if you would, or the, the computer betting tied into that is esports right there are a lot of people who literally play games on teams and essentially there when you have a pot right let's just say guys we have a madden tournament we have a call of duty tournament everybody put money in the pot a team wins. The team splits the pot. You literally just bet. You just you just gambled on computer sporting. That is that is online sports betting. So I do believe that we should be allowed online. We're fucking grown. What happened to liberty? What happened to freedom? As long as there isn't a harmed party. Republicans, question on the table. Hit the like button, y'all. Share the stream. Get engaged in the comment section. Rumble, y'all still over there? My Rumble got quiet. My Rumble chatters got quiet. Facebook took over. Facebook took over with a vengeance. Facebook took over tonight. Shouts out to Mike. Shouts out to Gavi. Shouts out to, to Mr. Coley. Malak Kohli, Malak Kohli, Malak Kohli. I'm just going to call him M. Loke. Your name is now M. Loke. I dub thee M. Loke. All right. So, yeah, that died on, on sign die. 
Um, let's see. There's another bill that fi- uh, that failed, originally supposed to prevent uh, student athletes from committing suicide. Oh, no, that passed the House. Um, now, it recently was stitched together for several former bills by banning transgender students from bathrooms that they identify with while also targeting sex education, school libraries, and school sports. Yeah, that one died. Um, I do remember that one dying. So, again, I can't say that I don't want a little boy using the same restroom as my daughter. That's, that's foul. And I can't get down with that. I don't care about how a person feels or thinks that they are. That is a sign of mental illness. And if that's the first sign of, of cracking and mental illness, then what else is going to happen? What happens when their mental illness goes further when they're in the bathroom with my daughter or they're in the bathroom with my goddaughter? You understand that? I don't I don't think people truly understand that. And that's a problem. And the fact that as a man, I'm not supposed to be able to say anything about that. That is a huge problem. But anyway, they they got scared. They bitched up and the, and the bill died up in the Senate. <laughs> um, There was some other. OK, here we go. Um, The immigration law passed. Right. So now um, the state law and local law enforcement, they have to notify the Department of Homeland Security if they suspect a legal immigrant is in custody. Um, The text film credit failed, which I'm okay with that because we need to get less and less Hollywood in Georgia. We need to figure out how to make these text film credits actually work for the people who live here in Georgia already. We got to figure that out. There's a bill that failed as far as. um, Uh. Uh, SB 390 failed. The bill would have cut funding uh, for programs tied to American Library Association and stop librarian accreditation through the American Library Association. Um, and I believe that this bill actually had something to do with um, the sexual books for children that are on the shelves. But it got, just like the other bill, it got you know bundled into a library bill and it failed because of what they bundled into that bill. So, And then you had the Religious Freedom, SB 180 failed. This bill was intended to protect religious liberty, but those opposed say the bill was an attack on the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah, I, why are y'all trying? Listen, y'all are trying to teach mental illness as a fucking religion. I don't understand it. Somebody help me understand it. Y'all help me understand it, please. Let me make sure my people still good over here. Where we at? We right here. Let me make sure we good over here. All right. All right. Let's say we good. It say we good. Okay. There you go. There we they go my rumble folk. There go fuego. Mental illness isn't a virtue. Thank you. It's not. It is not a virtue. But they're trying to make it one. They're trying to make it one. And this got to stop. This foolishness has got to stop. Shouts out to my people over on YouTube. They're still going strong. All right. You know, we got to check the streams, man. They be hating us over here. They be hating the real ninjas, man. Real ninjas do real things. Oh, let me go over here right quick. I just seen something. Y'all must be behind. Y'all must be a little behind over there on Rumble. Okay. That works. Let me see. Let me go here. Let me click over here. All right. All right. All right. Guess they good over there on X2. I think we are. Just checking, y'all. You know, my own producer over here. I'm the only one who can, yep, still rolling. Rolling strong over there on X. All right. Let's get back to what we were doing so we can get these phone lines opened up. Um... Fuego says, yes, they are indeed scary. That's exactly what's going on, man. They are scared. They are scared to death to stand up to these people. But I ain't scared. 
I ain't scared to stand up to this this abomination and this foolishness, man. And if you ain't scared, then hey, man, shouts out to you for being awesome and not scared of the bullshit. All right. All right. Fuego says stream sounds solid. No issues. Very good. Very good. Now, I talked about all that crazy stuff. We get at that. Let's get into um. Let's get into a couple of other things, and then we're going to uh. We're going to jump into the phone lines. A couple other little light things, little light things, little light things, little light things. Little light things like, oh, I don't know. Let's talk about, hold on now. No, you ain't supposed to be playing right now. All right, let's go. I want to play this when I get it on the screen, yo. I want to play this when I get on the screen, yo. Yo, so we have a local senior who has reached the number one spot in the nation for college acceptance and scholarship awards, y'all. Charlie Down name. She uh she about she two counties over, still in the nine one two, um. And um, I don't know. Maybe in the very near future, my kids will be attending the school that she attends. Let's check this out. Let's check this out. Reached the number one spot in the nation. High school senior has just reached the number one spot in the nation for college acceptances and scholarship awards. WTOC's Jasmine Butler has been following her progress and went to the special announcement today, and she brings us the story. You may remember Madison, the Liberty County High School senior who's been breaking records on her way to college. Back in February, she had been awarded more than $5 million in scholarships, but in just a month, she's gone from $5 million to $11 million. I can't even, like, fathom. She's number one in Liberty County, number one in the state of Georgia, and now she says... I'm number one in the country. <laughs> ...exceeding everything she could have imagined, and finally winning that bet she made with her dad. You owe me my $20 from <laughs> succeeding $6 million. <laughs> it's the best bet I've ever lost. It's a milestone that they're using to educate and empower others. And Madison sends a message to every student in Liberty County. I just want you guys to remember that the sky is not the limit and that I'm here to help you guys. I, I feel like helping people is what I live for. So Madison and her parents say they plan to host workshops for students and parents who have questions about applying for colleges and scholarships. We wanted to reach out to all of the schools within the district, all the students, because we have a lot of people asking us. So we were thinking, what is the one way that we could actually reach all of the students kind of at the same time, the ones that want to come? If that's something you're interested in, we'll have that information about how you can attend on our website at WTOC.com. In Liberty County, I'm Jasmine Butler, WTOC News. Bruh, bruh, f bruh, when I heard it, bruh, when I heard it, bruh, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look, look I'm going to be real. I'm going to be one in the chat if you've been to college. One in the chat if you've been to college in the United States. I can't speak for nowhere else but the United States because that's where I have my experience of going to college. If you've been to college in the United States, Put one in the chat. Fuego says one. Anybody else? Anybody else? Because I'm going to go somewhere with this. There is about two to four times per year. Hey. Better late than never, sir. Hell, you been hiding that. <laughs> Two to four times a year, there is a particular thing that we look for. Especially, shouts out to Mike. Mike, get me with the one. Two to four times a year, we look for, especially... That freshman year. What is that time we look for? Two to four times, depending on your school. Sometimes they do it once a semester. Sometimes they do it twice a semester. 
Oh, okay. Okay. All right. We'll we'll let you we'll let you slide. You missed all the festivities. You missed the fun. Sorta. Two to four times a year. There's this little segment of the of the semester that we look for. They usually do it. If they do it the two times a semester, they'll do one right around drop ad. And there's one that they do typically right around midterms. Y'all remember what I'm talking about? They do it one time that right at the drop ad time. And they do it one time right at midterms. This man said ice cream day. Nah, every day was ice cream day because we had an ice cream machine in the calf. We had a, we we had a, a, a ice cream machine in the calf. So as long as it was working, every day was ice cream day. Now, if you would have said fried chicken day, and you know we would probably could have had some some conversations, but no, no sir. It's the refund checks, man. The refund checks. Tell me, sir. Tell me you have for not you have not forsaken yourself and forgetting about the refund checks. You don't remember the refund checks, man? One in the chat if you ever got a refund check, man. One in the chat if you ever got a refund check around drop ad time, around midterm time, man. And if you never got a refund check, two in the chat if you know a friend that you went to school with that got a refund check. Bruh. Bowling. It was the greatest time on campus. No, 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 not not for dropping classes. So add drop day is like the last day you can drop a class and you could. uh, You could get some money back for dropping a class um, because you're not paying for that class anymore. But like that was the last day to pay for classes, right? Like add drop day, like, okay, this is the many classes you got. This is how much you got to pay. And once you pay, when they got a little, when, once they got, you know, active in being uh, proficient with the monies, we got uh, refund checks, like, because they gave it to us on the little cards. We got refund checks uh, the day of ad drop day or maybe the day after ad drop day once everything was taken care of. And then you got the other one at midterms because you didn't made it through the midterms and you still got those classes or whatnot. So you get the rest of your money. Because you had some people who literally, We'll go to school just to get the refund check, right? And your refund check is whatever money is, um, <coughs> excuse me, whatever money is left over on your account after your tuition, room and board, any expenses you have, right? So let's say you got um your financial aid, right? So it's your financial aid refund check is what it is. So if you got a scholarship that gave you X amount of dollars per year, right, or per semester, um. If you got uh, uh, loans, right, student loans, um, whatever the the extra money was, say you got a ten thousand dollars semester um, student loan, right, but it only cost you, you know, seven thousand dollars to pay for room, board, and your classes. Well, that three thousand dollars for that semester that is on that account is now refund to you. All right. And you can do with that money whatever you choose to do with it. Baby girl got $11 million in scholarships. Okay? $11 million in scholarships. Don't know how those scholarships are set up for over the course of four years or whatever those, you know, there may be some that say, hey, we're going to give you X amount and this is a one-time thing and we're going to give it all to you lump sum. Well, if it's a one-time thing and we give it all to her lump sum, whatever money is left over from that, she's, she's going to get it all to that first school, you know what I'm saying, that, that first semester, and whatever's left over is going to go in her pockets for a refund check. That's fucking boss. So shouts out to her. Sh- shouts out to this young queen. Interested in this the young, ones oh, that no, wants no, to no, 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 I don't want to hear y'all. 
I don't want to hear you. Here we go. Here she is. Shouts out to this young princess and her family. Let me see if I can get a, a picture of her and the fam. I need all three of them because her parents and her. There we go. Eh, oh, go back. Eh, go back. Eh. God dang it. Dab nab it. All right. Here we go. Quit playing with me, WTLC. What you think this is? Anyway, shouts out to this family, man. This family has secured some awesomeness. Um, these parents have raised a phenomenal daughter. Clearly, she's not a thought. Clearly. Clearly not a thought. Clearly not a, a, a sexy red train monster. And for that... Shouts out to the fam, man. Shouts out to this young lady, obviously being smart. She's in the band. I see it on her jacket. I'm not exactly sure if she plays any sports as well, but she understood the assignments, literally, and she secured the bag, literally. Go do your thing. Go, your school in this paper, you don't have to worry about nothing going to school. Nothing. Congratulations. That's big. That's big, man. I love that. I love that. And I want to see more and more and more of it. All right. 1021. Let me see. I want to show y'all two things. Because two things happened this week. Um, We had a commercial drop this week. And we had... We had a, a industry night in the city this week. So I'll do the industry night in the city. Oh, man. I'll do the industry night in the city, and then we'll talk about Diddy. Because we got to talk about Diddy and them. We ain't going to spend too long talking about Diddy, though. We might spend some time talking about the, the industry, but not Diddy. All right, guys. Let me see here. Nope. I got to go back here. And I got to go here. And let me go here with a little bit of this right here. Um, share the stream, y'all. Hit like, hit love, um, whichever you do. Let the people know that um, we live, baby, and we had us a jolly good time. All right, all right. Let's see here. One day ago, here we go. Oh, not that one. The recap came out yesterday, though. Right? Okay. So there's that, and then I can go to find that. Um, let's see. Is this this? Nope. Okay, what's this? All right. Put that there. And here. All right, guys. Pull this up on the screen. Because the time was definitely had in the city. All right, there we go. Bam. All right, so <clears throat> on um, Wednesday, we had something pop off. Down by the river, uh, Savannah Industry Night, man. Uh, my brother, CJ Jackson, also known as CJ the DJ, uh, Invited all the heavy hitters out, man, to the inaugural Down by the River Industry Live. Um, we had all the creatives of the city, all the creators, musicians, uh, podcasters, producers, videographers. They all showed up down to District Live, which is uh, the new hotel event space down at the Kessler Hotel. If you guys aren't familiar with Kessler, just look up the uh, Kessler um, the the Kessler Collection in Savannah and you'll see all the hotels. Dude's a super millionaire. I think he's a billionaire if I'm not mistaken. Um, he's definitely a high millionaire. Um, yeah, he bought the old electric plant down, the old power plant on the river and um, turned it into a hotel and event space. It's called the Entertainment District. So um, this event was held down there, and, um, man, we had a good time. Mano came in and held conversations and 
talk the little jewels, and I'll show y'all a wrap up with that. But of course, you know, your boy Pro was there rocking that 912 wear. Shouts out to my dog, NPC. It's Kate. You know what I'm saying? Had to have the jacket. And of course, free men defend themselves. Slaves depend on others. I'm kicking it there with Mano. And there's Mano with my bro on stage, and they're having good conversations. Um, Shouts out to the fam, man. Fam, bam, back there holding it down, bro. All man, all little brothers that came up under me DJing, man. You feel me? Out here in the streets. Still holding it down. Um, What else we got? Oh, oh. No Gucci, my dog. TB Ville. Ville's Grill. Hibachiville, the return of Hibachiville, man. It was uh it was his brother's birthday and his brother passed away. So been having the bu- do it for bus bash every year for his birthday and it was no different on Wednesday night, man. He had that good old hibachi. You see them wings back there cooking, man. Ville's grill's got the best wings in the city, y'all. Y'all, y'all, man, lay lay round for what's coming up for homecoming, bro. Lay round for it, bro. Lay round, cause it's going down. I gotta get everybody in Savannah for homecoming. It's going digital. All right. All right, let me put that on mute. They they killing me. So then they also had R and B Bango inside the club, bro. R and B Bango in the club, man. Shouts out to sis right there, man. DJ Too Smooth. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. That R and B Wednesday went down. That R and B Bango was was something serious, man. I had never seen that done like that before, and I must say it was dope. So, and then there we go. You know, your boy is in the building down by the river, 94.1, the beat tag. I got to show y'all the gif I made. The gif's so funny. I got to find it. I'll show it to y'all. The gif is funny. I know they was looking at through their stuff like, no, this nigga didn't. Yes, I did. Because I don't know if y'all could see my hat, but I got on my famous Joe and the whole got to go hat because that's how pro gets down. You yeah, feel man? <laughs> so, yeah, let's look at this quickly about, um, you know, what happened afterwards. Let's get it. All right, we go. KLB man, I, man, you already know what it is. The lobby boy man over the KLB man, and I want to shout out to Savannah, Georgia, the Pope. I know where I'm at. Thanks for showing me love. We gonna pull back up to the Pope yeah. for real. Yeah. yeah, I thought these d- was killers. Then we just selling us lies. Me no brown these hoes, man. Shut go for my clothes. I can spread this shit. I come and call. Yeah, like the kids that can these Legos. He d- talking like. road is different and what works for one person may not work for another um social media you know like so you, you see what, what happens with tiktok there's a song that may go viral and that, that may become a hit right but that may not be for everybody though i will say mano drop some jewelrific bars on that crowd in there man shouts out to mano upstanding guy um i hope you ain't a part of the segment that I'm going to have to talk about right after this. So, and I'm just going to put that there. Let's go. So, work with what you got. Use what you got. Use what's in your arsenal. Just stay true to who you are. Y'all see the big OG. Yeah, man, a time was had, man. So, shouts out to my bro, CJ, the DJ, for putting that together and using those resources over at 94.1 The Beats to, uh, you know, get this for the people because the creatives down here need it, man. Like, honestly, Savannah hasn't gotten a fair shake when it comes to music ever since Camouflage. You know, and everybody likes to give us, you know, our proper respect when it comes to Big Boy, and, and, and that's appreciative, but Big Boy is more Atlanta. He's from here. This is his home. He says it more than enough on songs, but he's still Atlanta. He wasn't discovered in Savannah and blew up. Camouflage was discovered in Savannah and blew up. Um, the best thing happening to us right now since Camouflage being discovered in Savannah and blowing up um, is Camouflage's daughter who was discovered in Savannah and rep Savannah, and she's blowing up, man. Shouts out to Big Foe, you know what I'm saying? Flage Johnson, who, by the way, while I'm sitting here talking about this, let me see what's going on right now, because she is very busy right now. Oh, 
Oh. Okay. Well, speaking of Miss Flage, Miss Flage has a very, very big game coming up in a couple of days, I think. Let me see. When is when do they play? Oh, tomorrow. Okay. Shouts out to Big Foe. Flage plays tomorrow. If you don't know who Flage Johnson is, Flage Johnson plays for LSU. All right. Um she was, I think, her, I think, she, well, she she played ball out of Atlanta. Her mom, and they moved to Atlanta. Um, her end of her middle school years, towards the beginning of her high school years, um, so she's been up there for schooling, and I understand <clears throat> more of a reason why I say I'm for school choice, so we can build better schools here in Savannah. But eh, it happens. Um, her mom moved up there in G Balls, but she never forgets Savannah. She never forgets the Pope. She always holds down and represents the Pope. Um, and she's, you know, not only a basketball player, but she's a rapper. She's, um, she's damn good at rapping. She was on America's Got Talent. She was on, um, Rap Stars, I think the JD show that JD had. So, um, yeah, man, she, she's been at it for, for quite some time now. And, um, you know, I'm so proud of Super Kid, man. I've called her Super Kid ever since I've known her when she was a little, <clears throat> just a wee little lad. She was uh she was a Girl Scout. She played basketball. She cheered, if I'm not mistaken. She did her damn school work like just straight balls. And she was rapping. To me, that was a super kid, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like she kept her work together and still was an oh, she was a Girl Scout as well. If I didn't say she was a Girl Scout, she was a Girl Scout as well. So basketball, Girl Scout, cheerleading. She may have ran track, if I'm not mistaken, right? Like, serious with it. And I, I'm so proud of Super Kid, bro. I'm so proud of it. And she's, she's not a kid anymore, um, obviously. She's, she's a grown little woman, but that's still my Super Kid. And I'm going to always give Super Kid her respect, man. I've always loved that. Um, but there is a dark side to that. There is a dark side to the industry. And that is what, honestly, if I'm going to be truthful with you, that is what scared me for Super Kid and so many other people like Super Kid. And that is coming through this horrible, nasty, filthy industry that is Holly Weird, that is the music industry. And it was just, it's just too much, right? So, and we're going to take a turn now, guys. We, matter of fact, before before we even take that turn, before we even go there, I want to show you guys a, a good commercial because, um, you know, I think everybody needs to see this commercial. I think you all need to enjoy this. And I believe that we need to, um, you guys need to go and patronize on this. All right. So do me a favor and um, check this commercial out and um, go and get the Go, go in and, and view it for yourself. I guarantee you, you'll enjoy. All right, guys. Um, commercial break, and then we're going to get to it. Let's go. Welcome to the fourth annual Grifties and the first ever live Grifty Awards. And now for your hosts, Uncle Hotep and Hotep Jesus. Yo, no George, but I can't even breathe in this joint. <laughs> That's fucked up. He working on that Coon of the Year award. Black people, am I right? We've got some great categories tonight, including athletes. We'll say what's up to your dad. Season's COVID-19. Who, who did you want? Hamlin? Hamlin's a sleeper. Hamlin's a sleeper. <laughs> Female, musical, celebrity, people's political grifty, the Hall of Fame, and a surprise category. Y'all see we professional, we got the teleprompter and shit. And of course, the one everyone is waiting for, Grifter of the Year Award. From podcast to movie. DJ Protocol. Yeah, DJ, that's the time to do it. Uh, 
This is not a grift. I really think Little Nas X is a gay demon. How dare Unlike you? Unlike most modern award shows, none of these women have penises. Women shouldn't speak anyway. Y'all pick the blackest room for a black. Paint the walls white so I can see y'all next time. All coons look alike to me. Some of you white people too. Some of y'all look like you came from Eight Mile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're halfway through. No one's been shot yet. But I'm gonna say at the Grifty Awards. There's only one person more arrogant, more self-assured than me, and that's Hotep Jesus. Grifter of the year. Clap it off for old Uncle Hotep. Hopefully my kids will watch this and be inspired and stuff like that. Fuck them kids. I'm looking for my wallet. I'm like, oh, thank God he didn't take it. Thank God. <laughs> Oh man, shouts out to the fam, bro. That was a uh, that was a time was had. A time was had. Yep. Check out the Grifties, y'all. It's available on the Patreon, um, Hotep Nation Patreon. Just go to hotepnation.com. You can also go to the Grifties.com, and it will lead you to the Promised Land as well to get to the Grifties. Shouts out to my partner, Fresh Mike. For putting together a phenomenal show with T Rex Hotel, Hotel T Rex, it was amazing. I'm glad to be a part of the production team. I'm glad to have been able to make such a amazing accident turn into comedic gold for the show. Um, yeah, man, that was fun. You know, accidents can turn out some of the best things sometimes, and yeah. So I'm just gonna leave that at that. All right, guys. So. We have got to talk about the D, the I, the D, the D, the Y, the Diddy, the I, the is Diddy. Hold up. <laughs> yeah, man. And I just want to say I got to preference this, all right? There's a lot of people, a lot of people who will see this video and, you know, they know me. They know that, you know, Man, back in the day, when I started my weed little company, all right, Thrills Enterprises, I went right over there. Uh, I was known as B Diddy because I didn't take no bitch assness. There was P Diddy and there was me, B Diddy. Mr. Protocol, B Diddy. People still call me Ben B. Diddy Wealth Building Adams. Because, you know, when you have those those Facebook names, you know, everybody. One in the chat, if you was one of the Facebookers who had the, the Facebook name. You know, in the Facebook name I'm talking about. You had something extra in your Facebook name. Um, that stuck with me because it was Ben B. Diddy Adams. And then I was like, okay, y'all, I'm off the B. Diddy. I'm wealth building. And it was Ben Wealth Building Adams. And then people just put it together. Ben B. Diddy Wealth Building Adams. Da, da, da. Just like now, to now to everyone, I'm pro reacher. And it's like, Jesus, y'all. Facebook is really niggas that know your name and they will still call you by your Facebook name. Um, it's funny. But anyway, I'm sure now everybody knows about what's going on with Diddy. And um the allegations that are coming his way, right? The allegations that, you know, at this point. They're deeper than allegations there. You know, you got a guy who didn't came out. And he was like, hey, I'm the new Fonsworth Bentley. And this man used my phone for everything. I got the pictures. I got the video. I got the keys, the keys, the keys. And this man has put out some stuff. Oh, well, he put it in the courts, at least. The judge has his hands on some stuff. And that is what led into all those doors being kicked in at Diddy's houses, right? A lot of people were upset that, you know, the conversation is about Diddy and, and all this. But it's like, hey, the truth is the truth. And if this man really did all these things that I believe that because it's Holly weird, then he should be taken care of. They really should deal with him the best way they know how. But it's not just him. 
That is Hollywood. And that is people with power. People with power just want more power. And people with a lot of power, they they seethe on expressing and showing how much power they actually have. And that is the music industry. That is Hollywood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, baby. I can get you on this show. Show enough. Show enough can get you on this show. But you know what? Come come see me in my office, man. Let's talk about it. It happens so much. It happens in the music industry all the time. Yeah, I let you get this producer, but I need the XYZ. And you got people who will give it up because they just want to be known. So if it means that I just got to do this with this person, and then they open the door. And now that person knows how they can hang and dangle that over you at all times. I don't like it. And that's why I stopped dealing with the music industry as I did. Because it was too much questionable stuff going on and I didn't want to be a part of it. That was just something I didn't want to lend my energy to. I'm learning about energies and talking. And, and at this time, you know, I'm, I'm deep in finding about energies and and doing certain things and pay attention to certain stuff and what you pay attention to you are allowing it to breed and breathe and grow because you are giving it the attention and energy it needs to fester and grow i had to stop i full stop had to stop and i did that as you know better you do better so then i moved on to where it was like okay you know what I'm going to provide the better situations that I want to see for my community. I'm going to provide the better radio and music options that I want to see for my community. And that's what I started doing. So I didn't care about an E93 or 94.1. And although my families, my brothers who enjoy DJing, they love the music industry. Those that's their choice that they make. And they'll, you know, they do what's best for them and their family. But for me, for me, I come from, a background of building my own. Every house that I have lived in growing up has been homes that I or my family has built. My house in the hood, with the big brick fence around it, I built that. I remember when it was was not none of that. The house in the country, the state in the country, we built that. I'm used to building things. I'm also in demolition. I'm about tearing down things and repurposing them some we tear down completely and we build a new some we break it down to the skeleton and then we build from there i'm okay with destroying down to a point and repurposing and rebuilding from there but that's what i do so it's easy for me to start a 3 Z and t or rec radio savannah from nothing and then build it to everything on a solid foundation that is mine I don't have to answer to anybody but myself and the creator. That's it. It's doing something to go against Holly weird or hella weird. And the music industry. Look at what these kids go through. All right. Everybody now is talking about quiet on the set. But you guys just now finding this out from quiet on the set. Because the because the, the the Mickey Mouse Club people already told us what was going on with Disney. Orlando Brown told you what was going on with Disney. Y'all questioning Diddy now. Bieber Ben told you Diddy was on some other stuff. Nah. Josh from Nickelodeon and all that, he told you what was up. Come on, man. You turn a blind eye to things and you just let it go. 
can't do that. We got to stand tall. Cause this is this is wicked evilness in high places. And when you just sit back idly and let them do whatever and you know what they're doing, you are just as complacent as them. You are just as responsible as them. We got to fix it. We got to fix it. So we're hearing, you know, Diddy names. So we got Diddy. We got R. Kelly. They don't get caught up. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. Jay-Z on the table. Jay-Z and Beyonce is on the table. Now, I know I'm about to get the beehive going to get mad and people going to get upset, but Jay-Z and Beyonce is on the table. And my good brother, Shaka Shakur, has done amazing breakdowns on this. Matter of fact, I think he did a video recently. Let me go see. Let me go see. All right, let's see. Two days ago. Two days ago, to the new people, no conspiracy, Puffy, Jay-Z, etc. Shaka Shakur. My dog, Gabby talked about him earlier. My dog is a beast when it comes to this. This man is a research master. And he has the receipts. Y'all think I was a bad man when it comes to having receipts. Nah, man. <laughs> we hit the shocker with Mama, they go that man again. <laughs> Mama, they go that man again. Because he's beast. Let me show y'all briefly what I'm talking about. Go check his page, Shaka Shakur. You see how to spell it? To the new people, no conspiracy, Puffy, Jay-Z, etc. And I know he broke it down. I know he broke it down like only he could. I'm going to watch it tonight after the show. I didn't get to watch it. I've already done been in this. We've been in this for years. As Gabby said earlier, this man is responsible for opening up a lot of people's eyes. And he showed me a lot of things. Some things I wasn't even ready for, but I had to see it. And then I, I wasn't ready, but I had to get ready. You know, it's a lot of things happening. It's a lot of things happening. You're going to see more. You're going to see more. So just be ready for what's coming, y'all. Be ready for what's coming. Because it's going to be big. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. All right, guys, let's go ahead. Let me do this. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Moloch. M. Lock, you in the building still, man? You probably gone, cuz. Oh, shit. All right, I'll pull that up while I'm waiting on those to come through. All right. Let me turn this on. Let me turn this on. All right. We're done with that. All right. All of that is set. All right. Cool. Hey, guys. You know what time it is. Phone lines open. Let's get it. 912-376-9383. 912-376-9383. Go ahead and call in. Let's get to it. While we wait on that. Hey, bro, how y'all feel about um how y'all feel about that bridge though? How y'all feel about that bridge though? Y'all know how we do when Fuego drops this in the chat. 
Yeah, bring an F. Fire! Ah! That's right. Bring that fire. How y'all feel about that bridge, man? That shit was crazy, right? That shit was ridiculous, man. Let me see if I can pull that up on the screen right quick. I found it ironic that it was, you know, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, right? Because we all know who Francis Scott Key is, right? Opsy on the bridge, right? <laughs> right. Let's see if we can pull this up right quick. Hmm. Where you at, buddy? Where you at, buddy? Oh man, I ship yo. So I, I share some good stuff on my Twitter page too. From this weekend, yeah. I forgot I posted all this on Twitter. I sure did. Oh, that shit was funny. Hey guys, what do you hear when you hear DEI? When you hear DEI, what is truly being said? In this here, uh, this tweet, I thought answered it per- uh, perfectly. Nigga. <laughs> what do you hear when you hear DEI? Nigga. <laughs> Boy, you're right. They ain't right. I just retweeted it, but you know. Hmm. <laughs> I seriously still think a sport uh think a sporting goods store. Hey. If I knew a sporting goods store named DEI, yeah. It does sound like a sporting goods store though. You're you're true. You're true to that. True to that. All right. Here we go. Oh, this is an Andrew Tate video. Did not know that. All right. All right. Let's go here. Check it out, y'all. Let's watch this right quick. Oh, REI here on the West Coast. Gotcha. Gotcha. Look at this boat. Lights went out. Okay, lights back. I'm going to bring it up. There we go. All right. And we're going to turn. We're going to turn. Up. Lights back out. Leroy. To accept, press one. To send a voicemail, press two. Well, Leroy Jenkins. Up oh, there, you go y'all. Lights back on. Up, oh, up. Oh, wait a minute. It's too late. Abandon ship. Hit the horn. Mayday. <laughs> Ju- something, nigga. Ah. Bam. Boy, they ran right slap into it, didn't they? Ran right into it. But here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. And I, and I just I just saw something just now as we as as I'm showing this and you said bow, you probably seen it, but I'm seeing something right about let me see. Let me make sure I saw what I thought I saw. Right in the right in this vicinity here, guys. Watch right here. Watch right here. Damn, boy, that truck. He might not have, might not have made it. Might not have made yeah. it. That truck. He might not have made it. That's why I always speed across bridges. Darn. Yeah, yeah. You say you speed across nope. them. You said you speed cross bridge. Oh, yeah. See, right there. Right there, guys. Right there. Look at that fire. Oh, come on, uh, X. What you doing, X? Yeah. X, what is you doing? See? Elon, Elon be tripping. Elon folk don't like me. 
They really don't like me. Oh, man. They done quit the video from playing. Oh, y'all see that? They gave us the circle, y'all. I found something, and they gave us the circle. Y'all see that? They did it. Y'all see it in full time. I done t- Listen, some people get to go. Other people don't get to go. They don't like my black ass. They don't like my black ass at all. But there was some, there was some, 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 some fire, like some blow up fire, like right up in this vicinity right here when it crashed. Mm, mm, mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, the way, the way it came down, looked like they took all the screws out. It did, bro. My bad. bad. Look, look, they ain't take all the screws out. They took all the bolts off the other side. It's so, the, at you get it. Yes. That's it. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it looked like. The way that it just disassembled and just and just fell. Like, it's no way, bro. There is no way that I hit that, that part right there. Man, this is crazy. This is crazy. Let me see. Let me click on this right quick. Okay, here we go. All right, it's back. All right, we're back. Yep, yep, extracurricular. Yep, here we go. Now, I want y'all to look at this right here and and, and watch how this area right here lights up. Did y'all see that? Oh, wow. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. some early smoke. Bruh. Bruh, bruh, and this is just like there's there is nothing there is there is no uh, that type of flammable right here. That was an accelerant <laughs> right there. That was some type of accelerant right there that took that that took flame. Uh, 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 it began with a G. When they use that World Trade Center, um. Uh, Te- ter- uh, t- oh man, not te- uh, thermite, uh, thermite, uh, thermite. thermite, thermite. Look at this. Look at that. Watch, guy. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Look at that. There go the start. There's the start. Where the smoke? Where the smoke come from? Where that type? Where that fireball come from? That was a fireball. That was a fireball, people. That was a fireball. Don't know where it came from. Holy shit. So as bros just said, so now we just found a fireball. If we look at how it fell and and came down, it was as if all, like he said, the bolts was taken out the side and it got hit and all the bolts shook out and the pieces just, just came apart. It was just like, it was a puzzle. It just, just slid apart. There was no breakage. There was no crumblage. Like the way that they're trying to make it seem like it happened. Um, it should be broken, crumbled pieces. It shouldn't be no straight line separated. It should be, oh, man, this thing got heavy and it broke. It, it snapped off because the rest of the integrity, not it just slid apart. Like, <sighs> anyway, guys. Kind of like the, hey, hey what did uh, Peter Jennings say uh, the day of the World Trade Center collapse? He said that uh, if anybody's seen controlled demolition, this looks a lot like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Six months later, from uh, 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 what gun cancer? Mm-hmm. The cancer gun, baby. The cancer gun. The heart attack gun. Boy, listen, they got a lot of stuff. Man, listen, it's some boo boo. Yeah, bubble. Yeah, fuego. Well, I had some of that building skill. Yeah, well, I can't prove it, but uh, probably heard about the people that was dancing on nine eleven. Yeah. The group of people that was there yeah. watching it. Yeah, I believe they involved. Yeah, it's possible. Hey, Amen. Right. I mean, I look, the same, the same, I saw, I think it was on TikTok, one of them short videos mm-hmm. said that another bridge collapse happened the same day in Ohio. Mm. I'd have to look that up because I didn't think about that one. Yeah, I mean, of course it wasn't the biggest this, but like you said in the beginning, the first thing that raised the laws was the name of the bridge. The name of the bridge. That's how I feel about it. That's how I feel and, about it. And, and you already know what they were saying after, you know, uh, after October 7th passing, that, well, you know, something may happen over here next. 
Mm-hmm. And I said, when that, that, that talk started going around, that if it does, it's because uh, we're not all on floor with what they're doing over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they they going to make us feel it. <laughs> yep. Man, I seen this. I'm about to share something else on the screen. I saw a... Uh, I saw what you sent me, Mike. You just sent me something. Yep, gotcha. You know I'm. You know I'm. A, you know it. You know it. Oh, you just. What is this though? This is something else. Oh, okay, it's the same thing, I guess. Yeah, you know I'm gonna talk about that, Mike. It's coming. It's coming. Um, let me let me pull this up though. Well, I guess I can talk about it now. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Um, I talked about it earlier. But that's huh? It's after ten. You can talk about it now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just uh, I can talk about it because you know might lose some people uh between now and then. But we got Shane. We got the great Shane Cashman who's coming through on the show on Sunday. Um, Rumble on Rumble. Me and Mike. Um, we got the, the 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 great, the talented man, the funny man himself, Shane Cashman. Um, we're gonna talk about you know Shane Cashman, man, and this new novel, man. How it's like working with Yay, and y'all know how I feel about Yay. You know, this man just wrote a novel about Yay, and it's approved by Yay. So I'm ready to talk to him about that and and see what's going on and a few other things in his life, man. So y'all make sure y'all tune in. We got the great Shane Cashman. I'm going to pull that up on the screen right quick. Before I uh get into this other crash that happened, man, because we had another crash happen um outside of that bridge. All right, here we go. Let me go ahead and uh share this. Shane Cashman live with Fresh Mike, Fresh White Mike, <laughs> and Protocol Rumble on Rumble, man. Seven Central, eight Eastern. Make sure you guys are in the building, man. We're going to talk about this. Fresh Mike is calling. I got you, Mike. I'm going to bring you in, man. I'm going to bring you in. You you want you want some of this two-way action? Yeah, I'm about to get that. I'm about to put that on right now. I'm about to do that right now. Is it going to automatically Six merge? Press one. To send a voicemail, press two. A hey, Mike. What up, dog? What's good? Chilling, man. You on the three way with the homie LS, man. LS, what you doing? Fresh Mike hand in the work to get this money. Hell yeah, man. I love I love a working man. Appreciate it. My dog. We need it. Oh, hold on, guys. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, I got to send this out. I got to Cannon Hotep has officially checked in the building, man. He done, he done checked out of that. He probably checked on the way home from that OT, bro. Bro, I've been getting it in lately, man. Oh, Shouts mate. out to Cannon. You know what Cannon did today? What did Cannon Big do? Big South Tech. You know what Cannon did today? What did he do? Cannon debuted on Tinfoil Hat Podcast with Sam Tripoli. He was the guest for Tinfoil Hat Yo. today. Drop today. Oh. Shouts out. Shouts out to that man. I know how he feels about Sam Tripoli, and um, yo man, that's that's <laughs> freaking awesome. Congrats to that. I'm going that to go cool, check man. out that episode. I have got to check out that episode. I'm right behind you. I did I did one in the airport, but we got to do the real deal, Holyfield. I'm right behind you. Yeah, you did the live, and he did the T T F H, which. Hopefully boost his numbers, man. Cannon, if you can hear this, man, I can't wait till you get back in. Also, uh, man, we book in shows, man, but, you know, Sunday, Tuesday, whenever I want to do Cannon on the show, no ditty. I want to have Cannon as a guest on the show. Yeah, man, you got to watch Either one of our shows, that. whatever we can. You got to watch So, anyway. <laughs> so, ditty! No ditty. Anyway. Oh man, it's it's uh I'm so glad, man, you know, like all the people in the community, the Hotep Nation, man, we're doing good. We're making strides right now, man. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Mike, I don't know if you can see right now, me and L S was just talking about um this thing that I was getting ready to bring up um on the screen. Uh let's see here. You guys got to go follow me on X if you don't follow me. Huh? Did he do it? Did he? Did he or did he not? I don't know. Did he? Did he don't? Did he not? 
<laughs> All right. So if you guys will see, if you can see the screen, there is something crazy that happened in Turkey. Turn this down. So you guys hear the guys talking. If you see the screen. Yep, yep. That's over there in, uh, what, Turkey? Turkey, yep. Yep. I heard about that, too. This is crazy. Hey, what are you doing? He just ran into uh, the cranes. He, he ran into... Hey, Washington's a mistake. Huh? Washington's a mistake. Washington's a mistake. Twice in the truck. Three times in the setup. Right. I, I, think, I think we done hit the setup. Oh, we past set up, bro. We're past set up at this point. This man straight up ran into the cranes on the dock, boy. Cannon says, no problem. He got y'all. He got us. So we're going to have Cannon on the show soon. It's going down. It's going down. <laughs> yeah, yep. man. Gabby thought LS was on the Nah, but I'm going to get him on. I'm going to get him and Shaka, baby girl. So... Yeah, y'all. Go ahead, Mike. Here's the thing, man. It's you know, man. Like I don't. It's it's all going according to plan, right? Because the thing is, it's like if you know, the Joker thrives in chaos, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it's all orchestrated chaos. Man, I was looking yesterday. You can pull up. There's a, a website. It just pulls up where military bases are all over the globe, like little pins, you know, in the globe. I mean, and it's nuts. If you look at where we have military representation all over the world, and there is no other country that even comes nearly close, right? <clears throat> and so they've been engineering this stuff. You know, Turkey? Come on, man. We got bases in Turkey. If you think about it, a lot of the crazy stuff that's happening. And then on top of that, man, I mean, come on. You know what I mean? It's one little thing, then it's, it's, it's all our phones going out. And then it's planes falling apart. And then it's trains derailing. And everybody's talking about traffic. Nobody's actually talking about it, like, on this level, like, putting it together. But everybody I know, every city I know, every town I know, everybody's complaining about traffic right now. Everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, it's one of those, that is the perfect example of the frog being in the water, you know, and, and boiling it. Yep. And that we just go to work every day and it gets a little worse, gets a little worse. Two years later, you, it, you know, your 10-minute trip took you an hour. And you're like, this is what? No, man, we're, they're not doing cities right, man. It's just set up. It's made to create chaos. Yep, yep. Also, they can go. So I was a part of, um, I was part of the Congress of New Urbanism. They came to Savannah a few years ago, and I actually got to, uh, I got to meet uh, <coughs> Mr. Kathy from Chick Fil A. So you know, it's funny hearing people, mm-hmm. um, you know, talk about him, you know, washing black folk feet or you know, cleaning their shoes. <laughs> And, That's um, what I was going to say. Did he wash your feet? No, he didn't did he wash, wash your dreads. No, he didn't, he didn't wash my feet or my dreads. But we did have a good conversation. And he went deeper into that um, into that conversation at the Congress of New Urbanism. Um, and he was speaking on when he was saying, you know, uh, white people should, like, clean black folks' shoes. It wasn't, like, as a reparational situation or anything of that nature. It was a... Uh, in a, as a sense of humbling a person down, a person who feels so high and mighty of themselves, right? Bringing them down on their knees to a humbling situation, just as humbling as cleaning a person's shoes and having a conversation with them, right? He took it that much deeper. So, you know, when people are like, oh, you know, he was doing that as far as like reparations, ha ha ha. Man, that's some, sorry, no, man, that's, that's some rich white man shit. It I'm is not, some rich, it sorry, is, some, I don't, it I is, don't, it is some rich, no, man. It, it is some rich white man shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, dude, you're like, you're, you're, you're poor white man shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you just a nigga. Yeah. You out here with us. You a nigga. You feel me? So, like, right. as opposed to, Someone who's super also, rich. Also, can I can I tell you from a white had to deal with? You, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I got right. You. Also, from a white man's point of view, I feel like it's it's promoting victimhood. Like the only reason I'm washing your shoes is to stoop down and to show you that I'll come down to your. Le- it's it's that not, DEI level so, of presupposition that you are lower than me. So it's not it's, <laughs> it's not a sense of I, I don't again. In having a conversation with him, right, 
as being a business yeah. owner, just being a regular black man from Savannah who is standing in this hotel in the lobby, chilling, having a conversation, picking the mind of a guy with the, a business model that I love and respect, right? Like you have a billionaire. You, yeah. Dude, yeah. you like your customer service is so fucking raw, right? That you've got other people copying what the fuck you do. You yep. put people outside to take orders to speed up the process, and now other people are putting people outside to try and speed up the process. When you ha when people tell your employees thank you in your drive through or in your establishment, right, the first thing that comes out of your people's mouth automatically is my pleasure, okay? You yep. have created something different that everybody else wants to be a part of. So now I need to have the opportunity to have this conversation and pick your brain. And what I looked at it as, because again, it wasn't so much of the shoe cleaning as it is to the, the way that he is willing to humble himself and not only him, but because he bought, he buys every general manager, and every store owner, if I'm not mistaken, every general manager and every store owner, he buys a shoe brush, a shoe, a shoe cleaning kit and gives it to them. Right. On some. Yeah, you might have this position, but always. Does he, does he be, buy him? Does he buy him cocoa butter and barbecue sauce, too? Because he's like, this is how you show black people you care. I, I don't think it's <laughs> so. It, here's, here's my thing. I don't see. I, <laughs> I don't think it's a to show black people they care thing. I think it's to show um to hum to to humble yourself with not just black people, but to other people who are not on your level, right? At the moment. Uh, let me just say at the moment, who are not on your level at the moment, but it at least gives you a a in route for people to communicate with you. You are being broken down or humbled down enough to where you are not beyond approach from anyone. All right. And that was the conversation right, is that it puts in the mindset. So I don't look at it as a, as a color barrier to the situation. People made the color barrier situation because when he talked to us in, in the car, in the Congress of new urbanism, color never came out his mouth when it came to shining shoes or cleaning shoes. It never came out his mouth. It was the right. fact of being able to humble yourself <laughs> to, I mean, look, I, I'm a black man that'll walk straight the fuck by, or I won't even say walk straight by. I will drive straight by a white homeless person on the corner of Abercorn and Duran. I won't even look them in the eyes. Not that I feel that I'm higher than them, but I feel like them niggas made more money than I made. They standing on one of the biggest intersections in the goddamn city. And they got and and people is pulling up and putting tens and twenties and fifties in their cup. What, Brothers. Well, yeah, oh yeah, no. And I look at it even further, man. I'm like, if I don't go to work and pay these taxes, when you land in my hospitals and in my shelters and in my jails. You know what I mean? It's going to be even worse for you and everybody else in there. So I got to pay these taxes so you can have these things. Yeah. Because we're not a socialist level government at all. No. At all. At all. So anyway. No, man. Not at all. But that's a, you know, <laughs> hey, the migrants might disagree with you. <laughs> Ooh, man. I don't even, man. Facts. Man, you want to talk about, they, they're going to fuck around and unite all the black and white folks. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> you know I mean? It's happening right now. <laughs> It's happening. So we're like, right we didn't now. plan on this. <laughs> <laughs> what we got? We're back in the MC Hammer Vanilla Ice doing records together days. What happened? <laughs> we worked so hard to break this down. You know? Right. <laughs> right. And now they then came together. You know I mean? <laughs> I'm just seeing old white men who don't get it. That would be their thought. But anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, no, man. Whew, the immigration issue, and it's you know the the scary thing is the only solution that I can see is just you know 
legit mass deportation. If you are arrested at all in any way, shape, or form, or if you're picked up, and I mean pulled over for a ticket, you know what I mean? Whatever the case, if you don't have your papers, you got to go right now, you know? Um, you just got to go. And uh, I mean... Show me your I, 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 <laughs> Show me your what? paper. Show you me your, your paper. paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, see, I don't want to be that dude, but look. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It gets to a point where, yeah, man, the fact that, I mean, it was only a matter of time before they started turning on police and stuff. But, I mean, what happens if 200 folks show up in your neighborhood and decide that your house is their house and you got to get out because 40 people want in your house? And they will stack 40 to a two, three bedroom all day. And I mean that. So it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, what do you do if they show up? Too late. Yeah, can't in the building. What 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 do you do when they show up? You dust off the two A and get to it. <laughs> That's how you have to dance. You, you, you introduce them, Mister uh, Lid. You're, no, no, you, you're right, Mister Lid. <laughs> Ellis <laughs> don't play and I completely agree if you have to you have to but I mean I don't want America I mean look man it, like at that point shit is broken you know what I mean our government has completely failed us our military has failed us like everything <laughs> are not- failing us. They're, they're in the process of failing us you know they, they ain't got to the failed part yet failed is past this they doing it <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. currently in a free fall. You're right. He's right. Yeah. Current free fall. <laughs> and it's up to us to catch it and and, and, and uphold it, man. Because if we don't, it's ugly. And that and that's, that's why they hit the bridge with the name. They give us the symbolism. You I'm, know, deep in the recesses of the subconscious. I'm going to tell you what I'm happened. I'm telling you, man. Like it or not. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm going to tell you what happened with the bridge. You want to know what happened with the bridge? This is what happened with the bridge. Damn, when did Gavi ask who was on the line? I didn't even see it. You had, um, okay, I see it now. Dang, man. That job sped past that. <coughs> oh, man. That job sped. I don't know what's going on with my chat. Anyway, I'm going to tell you what happened with the bridge. Uh, Diddy called because Bad Boy was in trouble. <laughs> Bad boy was in trouble, and and you and cause that cause so y'all know the new Bad Boys Four trailer dropped right. Bad Boys Four dropped the uh-huh. trailer on the same day that the bridge fell, and this is the same day that wow. that, that Mr. Bad Boy take that take that is uh was 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 in trouble. So did he call that was. And, did he call the little young black mayor dude and was like, hey, homie, I need you to do something with the bridge. Nah, and he's he like, take that, take that. He ain't, he ain't even call the mayor. Because, see, you know, Diddy is international, right? <laughs> Diddy international. Diddy yeah. ain't call the mayor. Diddy call the ship. Diddy call the Singapore <laughs> ship and said, run that boat into the bridge. And he was like, nah, yeah, because you remember in Bad Boys. He was like, nah, we can't do that. We can't run the ambulance into the Run that boat into the bridge. <laughs> it's like, that's what happened. Did he call him and told him to ram that boat in the bridge? And he was like, I couldn't do it. And he said, you be- if you want to live, you will run that boat into the bridge. <laughs> so he ran the boat into the bridge. And and, and that's, that's what happened. A, that's, how like, that's how like LBJ talking about uh, the USS Liberty. I want that. Yeah. To the bottom. <laughs> he was like, he was like, well, well, who are we gonna blame it on? And dude, he was like, look, there's a young black dude with a little bit of power, and if there's one thing I'm good at, it is fucking over young black men with a little bit of power. Mm. So <laughs> I got you, you know. And then you know, fast forward to a mayor going, I don't know what the hell's going on. Everybody's like, how dare he? Which is another thing I, I really wanted to actually specifically bring up on this show. What's up? Uh. Uh, and that is something, man, that like, you know, always looking at it deeper is that there was a black Republican mayoral candidate that was uh, running in Baltimore right now. 
couple things. One, you know, it, it is local politics. So, you know, uh, in Baltimore, which is a little bit away from me, but I just thought how powerful would that have been? But then they're saying they only got 7% of the vote. And I'm thinking, well, is that because we're not getting the RNC support behind folks like that? Or is Baltimore a lost cause city like, you know, like New York is considered to be? I think I think Baltimore, Cannon, if you if you're still in if you're still in the chat, bro, if you're still in the chat, man, you know, you you would know more because you're there. Um, I got family in Baltimore, so I can only speak on what I have picked my family's brains on and what well, I well, and your see. knowledge of the RNC overall yeah, 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 and, and yeah, how yeah, they yeah. do black yeah. city yeah. The outreach. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about that. So thank you for asking. <clears throat> I, it is at the moment what I see as a laws call situation, right? Because as I stated earlier in the show, you have people who are bred, taught, raised, and their family's family, family has told you, boy, you black, so you better vote Democrat. Okay? Yeah. So it's that way. Now, with the RNC putting in money, right? If you are in an area where you know that they don't care, it's going to be black, and Democrat, no matter what, do you really hemorrhage and waste money, right? Because ultimately, that's what you're going to do. You're going to show face, right? Hey, well, <coughs> at least he showed up to the game. He got his ass whooped, but at least he showed up to the game. Is that what you're going to walk away with? Right. So, okay, and fair. But I, I legit believe if we could get some more, at least, or some sort of more conservative representation in your Baltimore's and Atlantis and, you know what I mean, um, Austin, Dallas, you know what I'm saying? Which Dallas is a little more conservative, but definitely you're like your L.A.'s, your Minnesota's, New York's. If, if we could get, because, I mean... You know what I'm saying? Because the I conservative feel, movement, they're, they're, especially they're, conservative movement from your angle, is a good movement for folks, specifically and especially black folks who want to own businesses, you know, break poverty cycles, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, grow and learn. Like like your, uh, you know, how how you live and then what you could teach and, and you know what I mean? This wing of the party people, and folks like-minded could... It will yeah. take people who want to, again, you have people who've been raised, don't go over there. It takes uh, people yeah. who are willing to say, fuck what you talking about, I'm going over here anyway. Okay? When you don't have that, that's like opening up a business, right? Right? You're there to turn a profit. You're there to see movement. If you open up that business and it's there for four years, four years, and no one comes, like you do not sustain a crowd. You don't have a clientele. You don't see a reason to continuously keep opening the doors and paying a light bill and paying a water bill and paying an internet bill because I'm just using the money in my savings account. I'm not using yep. the money that's coming into the drawer. All right. I'm not using the money that is coming is in from because yeah. there's none coming in. So now at this point in time, <laughs> I have to say, okay, you know what? I can't do this. And that is how they've been yeah. operating, right? They've been warning, they've been trying, but there's no one you can't put, Okay, the problem with what Baltimore, and I don't, I don't know about the lady who ran for it, right? But I can assure you, she ain't had no real connection in the hood. She didn't have no real connection to Baltimore in Baltimore. She was a pastor. She was a pastor. So, you, yep. You well, there you go. You're I forgot what I was listening to. She was a. She was a pastor, uh, you know, black female pastor. Um, so, so there's so a you would think she would problem. pull a heavy. Nah, Sorry, nah, that's the problem. 
And that's interesting that the conservatives ran with a black woman pastor. And I'm going to be real. They probably didn't even run with her. They probably really got stuck with her, right? She ran, she is, she, she signed up and said that I'm going to run as a Republican for mayor. And the party was like, fuck. Oh, well, we got a candidate that we got to like, we have to stand behind because once you have a declared candidate as a party, you have yep. to stand behind that declared candidate. And she seven percent of, Sorry, go ahead, I mean, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ellen. Well, I mean, what you said is true to an extent, uh, protocol. I mean, think about how they turned on Trump. They are, they is such a thing as rhinos. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 But that's not, that's not, that's not the party, though. So, look, so, like, the party itself, they ha- they don't have to get fully behind you, but they have to accept you as their candidate when you're the candidate. They have to. They they may not throw. They may they may sabotage you in the background, but they have to. The party, right? I'm saying the party. I'm not talking about the idiots that that claim to be. I'm talking about the actual status and organization of the party, right? They have to back the candidate. They have to. They have to input into the candidate. Or like what if I get to Arizona. I'm- yeah, I was gonna say it's like it's a redheaded stepchild situation, like Baltimore, where it's like we would not care if nobody ran, but because this woman is, I mean, seven percent of the vote, you can't ignore that. That's not ever gonna win. But if you're fully pulling five percent in a major, you know, top ten American city, that's something, right? You can't mm-hmm. ignore that. And how bad would you look at the RNC if there's a black woman who's also a Christian minister? And she's pulling more than 5% of a vote and you're completely, which they did anyway. But, and so they had to at least accept that she was doing it because she was doing it. And so they were like, okay, you know what I mean? Whatever minimum check boxes we have to fill out to make sure that you are, you know, part of the team and we're doing the thing moving yep. forward, we'll do that. Yep. So that's I'm it. assuming that's what happened. That's, that's, what, thinking, that's, that's so. what happened. And she wasn't like, believe it or not, I'm going to be so for real with you. The black community is not too open to like as a whole, they're not too open to women pastors. No, sir. They're not really too open to to, to women pastors. They'll take a first lady all day. They not too open to the women Man. pastors. <laughs> but look at all the black female politicians. Would you guys say that the black community is more open to female pastors or female politicians at this point? Politicians. Oh, no. They'll follow female black male politicians. You can't say nothing about bad about Fannie in Atlanta. Boy, you might have to fight. What? <laughs> Boy, what? Man, I seen a video earlier. Man, let me see if I can find that video. My uh uh L S, did you see it? I think it was in I think it was in that group. I think it was in that group. Uh, I'm about, she's sitting in the green and she talking that trash about uh she wouldn't date anybody under her and all that. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. She got an award. Oh my oh, god. Yeah. She got <laughs> an award. Let me see. Oh, Robert Govell, yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking. Man, why why can't she just shut the up? They were I, we, there were some dummies, y'all. I'm just saying, I'm out here every day when you trying to juggle, running all over, you know, the town center three, four hours a day in my car to get back and forth to make a living. And nobody's giving me awards for that. You know what I mean? They're barely keeping my light bills together for that, right? right. This woman comes up, gives a hundred grand to go on sex vacations and they're giving her awards while she's throwing attitude. Like we are the assholes the whole time. Like, <laughs> right. You have white privilege. You have your reward. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah. Base in this white privilege. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still working out for you. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just, this ice over here is so cold. You don't even know, man. You mm. don't know. That's right. That's what you said. No, no, but hey, to back up a little bit what y'all said about the party, I got to throw a monkey wrench in now. Mm-hmm. Kathy Barnett. Yeah. yeah. So- Kathy Barnett, she, she should have been the representative over Dr. Oz to go up against Uncle Fester. Absolutely. Agreed. Absolutely. Agreed. And the party the party pushed that. And I don't know again, 
this is why you know I'm I'm not all behind. I, I'm so glad that you know Ronna McDonough ass is out of there, but she should have been gone. She should have been gone. Okay, get the job right now. <laughs> Duh, she yeah. can. That's what I ass get though. That's what the fuck she get, bro. Because she should honestly, she should have never yep, been in the RNC. The yep. Yeah, so you know, she well, you know who is. She, yeah. Now, hey, check this out, fellas. If a insurance salesman and a used car salesman could have a baby, it sound just like Mitt Romney. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> he would sound just like Mitt Romney mm. from birth. He'll come out the womb talking that trash. Mm. <laughs> I don't see it no more, bro. <laughs> I've been having problems <clears throat> with seeing um, a lot of the stuff in that group again, bros. I couldn't even find what? Mr. Malaki earlier. I could yeah, they him. move. Uh, you, you, you know how Facebook do. Yeah, you man. know. Yeah, man. If they want you to find it. They're going to hit shuffle on your ass and it's gone. Out of here. And think about, man, I, I want to, I want you to think about something too, man. I, I noticed this the other day. Okay. So Facebook knows my wife is married to me. We are tagged as married, right? Like mm-hmm. to each other on Facebook. Then my mother is tagged as my mother, right? On Facebook. So Facebook knows my mother, knows my mom, my stepdad, like, you know what I mean? Like we're clearly, I mean, Facebook knows when you poop. So they know who you are around with phones and all of that stuff. But tell me why I never see them in my feed. Pro, me and Pro do a show that I blast on Facebook for hours a week. Hours. We do at least two hours a week. I don't see him in my feed. I see some crazy Democrats talking about, I don't literally post in the, if you respect Trump, I don't respect you memes and the Biden's going to save us all. I see all of this crap, but I don't see people that I interact with, do shows with, live with. And it's so weird. And I, you know, I have old homies that, Facebook is how we would keep up. You know how it is. You got like, you know, you know what it is. You know, you get older and you got like your 30 friends or so that you try to keep in touch with, mm-hmm. which is why Facebook took off in the first place. But I don't see it. I have to go dig for him. my boy, Ray Chan, who I'm very close. You know what I mean? We're homies. And he's like, man. And then I look, and it's like 12 posts. My boy, Damon Detroit, you know, very close comedy friend. My boy, Joe Moffat, that I partner with and do comedy with as well. You guys aren't in my feed. Sometimes Joe is, but that's like it. I have to go to your page. It makes no sense. Yeah, I'm just saying, man, it's all a it's all a scam. Yeah. yeah it's definitely all a sham and a scam, bro. They show us what they want to show us and they keep away what they don't want us to see. And yeah, man. It's it's freaking horrible, bro. It, it's a horrible I'm I'm telling you, man, that, that, that I wanna while, while, while we got it last on the phone, I wanted to ask this. Did you see okay? And I know everybody's calling it the Obama movie, but once again, I really liked it, uh, and oh. and I believe it really is what uh, before the end of the world, I think it was called or something. Leave the world behind. Uh, yeah, oh, that's trash. Right. Okay, yeah. see, I did not think it was trash. I think it was them telling us the plan because they have to tell you the plan first. Mm-hmm. That secret is they have to, and Hollywood that's been taken over by C. I Hollywood is a big sigh up from the jump. Mm. It really is. Yeah. And yeah. You, you know, I mean, it's all coming out now. I mean, you know, and it's just like how many things I was talking to somebody the other day. I was like, think about it. You got Martin Lawrence, you got Diddy, you got, um, cause he was saying, how come, you know, they're busting Diddy like this, but you know, there's nobody busting uh homeboy from Nickelodeon and Dan Snyder. who's just walking free. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So they're not saying Diddy is innocent, but I'm saying they come after it and they did it to Ye. And you're lucky if you make it out alive. Some people just make it out alive. And then 20 years later, like Martin, you come okay. And then there are certain people who are higher up, like a Ye, who can actually elevate past all of it and remain in it and still have success. Um, a shout out, we'll talk to Shane Cashman, who hung out a lot with Ye all over Europe. Uh, you know, Sunday, but anyway. Um, uh, um, you know, is, is that it's all a scheme and Hollywood is a scheme and, and, you know, Hollywood was a CIA op, uh, in the yeah. beginning anyway. 
And they, so the whole point is that's their whole deal. Like Moloch and the whole sacrifice and the deal they make, they have to tell you, they tell you through Hollywood. That's why they glitch it up and call it fiction and have people, they pay millions of dollars to act like other people. Think about that. Mm -hmm. They have people and they go, I'm going to pay you millions of dollars and turn you into a demigod of society to act like another person. What? And it's because mm-hmm. that's how they get their message out. They make you believe it's something big and magical so it doesn't hit. But that movie, while maybe trash to you and, and fair, you're allowed the opinion, they broke it down on purpose. They kind of told you what they were going to do. And that is that you're going to have small grid failures, right? So you have a small grid failure that separates island New York from uh, mainland. Then you have small grid failure that, that separates, you know, uh, you know, northern east coast from southern east coast. Mm-hmm. Then small grid failure that separates, you know, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, you know what I mean, Louisiana area from y'all. And over and, and then, you know, separates California goes out completely. So all you need, you don't need to take over the world or shut down all of the U.S. You just need these small grid failures in certain key places that cut us all off. And then we don't know what's going on. And then we're susceptible to whatever information they feed us. But we're all freaking out because our phones and our TVs and our computers don't work. Mm -hmm. And we're so addicted to that stuff now. So, yeah, man. Don't forget about the test. What was that? October 4th last year. Where they said, uh, you know, turn off your phone for two hours. Yep. 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 I remember that now. I forgot all about that. I'm still tripping over... Because when our phones went out, it was, um, that was like one of those busy days and it was either right after or right before the Grifties. Uh, and I, re- and I was doing like, it was just one of those days where I had like 14 things I needed to do and my phone was shut off. <laughs> and it was like, it was a real, you know me, dude, you know how not stressed and cool and laid back I am, right? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know how I just take everything smooth and never get upset or mad. But anyway, <laughs> Anyway, dude, I, I I couldn't use my phone for like seven hours and I was losing my mind. And I, yeah, dude, I was like, oh, and then you realize they got you. It's really like a drug. It's like, I can't get my drug. I'm out here in the streets. You know what I mean? It's like, well, dude, I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to cut an old lady so I can use her phone. You know what I'm saying? I need to check my Facebook, bitch. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I'm just saying that's how they get you. And all they got to do is think about it, man. All they got to do is shut off my ability to communicate with y'all. Period. Right. You know, and then I freak out. Yeah. So. Meanwhile, you know, Fannie Willis is getting the uh, uh, 2024 Revolutionary Award in Atlanta. You know yeah. what I'm saying? For International oh, thank Women's God. Day. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's... Yes. But I woke, I, I woke yeah. up this morning and I was like, man, the world would be better if Fanny could get some more recognition. You know? Right. <laughs> That's what we need. That's what we That's need. What we... And, and what bothers oh, me is all the, like, it's a room full of beautiful black yeah. women. It's like, God damn, you dumb bitches. 2024 Revolutionary Awards recipient. Y'all standing behind this bitch? This trollop? This this heifer. (laughs) Oh. oh. (laughs) Mike. (laughs) Fuego says Mike's holding dicks to use the phone. (laughs) 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 Oh, man. It's it's Friday Night Flights at the dock. What's up, bro? Mm-hmm. When I first saw this video, somebody, uh, the person that posted it said that this is what support looks like. I replied and told them, no, this is what severe delusion looks like. Amen. I mean, this, this woman slept with a married man. And I'm sure a lot of them women in there are married. You, are, If you and your husband go out with Fanny, uh, you gonna walk away from the table and go powder your nose and leave her there with your man? Mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah, yeah, that's mm. the question I want to ask the what? married women in now. Right, the fact that uh, yeah, no, the the fact that the women, the and the there was 
there was there was event there were women hold on let me press play because there's a woman who laid hand on her and the other people extended hand of prayer to her this this jezebel in this there you go and this mic is why we say you know i'm saying truly in the black community they don't they they as a whole they don't deal with women pastors because women pastors no. really like if you re- in the Bible in the, and that's all I'm going to say. What does it speak about women pastors in the Bible? You know, don't yeah, yeah. don't say. Yeah. So if they true that and so so the 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 women pastors are put in the same uh, uh, retrospect as the LGBTQ plus in the real black community. You have those, wow. we want to be accepted, whatever, whatever's, right? And they'll do the women pastor. Like, okay, I'm going to be real. Most women pastors pastor a church that are LGBTQ accepting. Yeah, Methodist or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. As, <laughs> so far, I, I, I know. As opposed I'll to like, the Southern... No. Yeah, yeah, all of them is, but you know, you got your pastors who's like, I ain't with that that stuff. Keep the please keep that stuff. They they they're those probably the most praying pastors around. Please, God, don't let none of them come in my church where I got to deal with them. Please. <laughs> yeah, you got you got to go down the old dirt road to find them churches at right. this point, right? Because if they big, like uh uh, what is it uh, new birth or world changes or. Uh, Whatever T D Jakes called his church out there, do ain't no ain't no uh turning that around. Nah, ain't no turning. Like, yeah. like, Have you ever been like, swallowed? Like that too. Oh my god, don't do it. Swallowed. Here's a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. As 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 shady as T D Jakes has been accused of being, do you think he's getting some kind of cover because he is a pastor, or do you think it's all out in the open and, and he's clear, or do you think that they're going to be coming for him? I think they're probably coming for him. He is getting, so not only is he getting cover because he's a pastor, but he's the most loved, most like a uh, black pastor right now. So he's so just like Fanny is getting cover from the black community. He's getting cover from the black yeah. community and they're scared to go after yeah. him. I think that's what it is ultimately. Pass the power bottle. That's we pastor power bottom. They came out when uh you know they they first started talking about Diddy. Yeah, with, with well, Cassie when she was thirty mil, or, or rather when she was working on her thirty mil ticket. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, and, and and that's the thing that you got to. I mean, let's. This is just opinion here, but I just feel like if you're trying to be a man of God, like, I mean, we, we got to kick it with Bryson and that dude is the most real ingredient human. Like somebody said they're a thug. I've never met a more real thug as Bryson is a Christian. Somebody said they're a businessman. I never met a more real business. Like this dude is, is the most Christian dude living his life and what he preaches like on the real whether you agree with it or not this man he is the most real dude this man was reading his bible in the comedy club he was some of the comedy was upset at him so he pulled out his bible to read it so he's you know <laughs> just that real you know what i'm saying so um <laughs> you know, I, I i got sidetracked what was i saying I, I, right before the bryson thing I had a point about that. Oh, Christianity. Um, so I'm just saying, so, and he's a Christian rapper, so he could have been in some of those circles a little bit because he actually ended up, you know, he was working with Kanye a little bit, right? So that's mm-hmm. one thing. And But um, to be a Christian pastor, a bishop of all things, um, to be a bishop and a Christian and to try to be in that world with those people, man, you got to, you know what I'm saying? Like there, there's something really wrong there in my opinion and now it's coming out i mean we all knew diddy was shady and a gangster and did shady shit i mean we all knew come on we've mm-hmm. all known that for i mean we all know that so mm-hmm. there's that but then um 
to be a pastor and then to supposedly be a high level bishop pastor and to be kicking it with him and going to those those parties and stuff, man. That's that's to me that's a special level of evil. You know what I mean? Because you're 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 doing it in the name of yeah, I'm just saying it's it's that's I'm not messing with that stuff, man. There's a special place in hell for you. Bad things are gonna happen. You know what I mean? Your death is not gonna be easy or nice. Like it's gonna be bad for you all the way around if in the name of God you get those riches and then go into those sinful places being like that. For real in my opinion. So yeah. Yeah, because you I mean, you're turning people away from and it's intentional. From yep. from what you claim to be representing. You know, and yeah, everybody, I, there, there's not one perfect person besides him who made us all, but mm-hmm. these guys are, <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. almost ain't even words for how they getting down that you can say on YouTube. <laughs> and yeah. not, not get hammered immediately. I mean, and that that's crazy because this is supposed to be a free flow platform, right? Mm-hmm. You know? You no. Know. Supposed to be <laughs> yeah. you know. represent yeah. uh, opinion or, in the words of Tiffany Henry, allegations. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a uh, man, P- Pastor Power. That's why I call him Pastor Power Bottom. He in for a world of hurt. Yeah, world of hurt. Yeah, man. I mean, he, he, you know, yeah. all the same church. You got <laughs> transgenders or whatever it was just walking up with that. With the AR? For real? It's going down. That was wild. It's going wild. down, bro. I I just hope people ready for what's, you know, what is coming our way. Cause it's coming. Well man, I think I think it's it's I think we're in a tricky time. I think the pendulum is swinging back in that if you look like Young men, 18 um, to 25, consider themselves more conservative than they have in 30 years. And you know that the DEI stuff just ain't holding anymore. Because, mm-hmm. look, at the end of the day, we can screen DEI all day, but people people need jobs. Mm-hmm. Like, I promise you, if you own a business right now, you don't care if the person is purple. If they'll come in and do a good job, come on, let's go. You know what I'm saying? So, um and for the blatant DEI stuff, you know, um, in the corporate positions and stuff, well, that, you know, we already know that that's not only not help the folks it was supposed to, it's just help white women gain more power and look how good things are. So, you know, there you go there. So, but <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, 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 on the, uh, on the side track, at one time in the past couple of years, the, the highest paid executive woman was a man. Is oh, that still my true? God. <laughs> I'm just... I'm, you know, I, I, had, I forgot the guy's name. I mean, the man's name. But you know what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. But, yeah, and he was married to a black woman oh. and decided at a ripe old age to do the Bruce Jenner. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Be, that's and, so... Well, and so that made him the highest paid woman. Mm-hmm. Ain't that? I mean, women are supposed to be mad at his stuff, right? Yeah, that's some Moloch. That's some that's some devil stuff right there, man. That's the yeah, man. That's the we're gonna move you three circles up in the evil. <laughs> I don't care. Here's the deal, man. How do you do that at that age? I don't understand that. Like, how do you live your whole I mean, life one way, and then you you you're selling your soul for something, man? Somebody got to you for to do that, you know. Especially if you're making lots of money and you don't need the money, you don't need to do that, and you're old, and you do that shit, man. Somebody got to you. You've been corrupted. Oh no, in my opinion, they got them on tape at one of them islands. I'm gonna say one of them islands because Epstein Island ain't the only island, you know. Um, uh, oh, no, uh, yeah. uh, um, the dude who owns Virgin Island, uh, Virgin Records, he has an island. Um, Diddy has an Branson. island, yeah. Branson owns an island, Diddy has an island. Um, Beyonce and uh, yeah. Jay Z got an island, yeah. They got an island, well, yeah. Well, the U.S., yeah, the, the whole U.S. Virgin Islands, man, and all the weird military, uh, you know, uh, experimental private. We, why do we not hear anything about that or those people right there, right off the coast of Florida, right there by us? 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's U.S. territory, supposedly. We hear nothing ever about it. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to go commit crime, man, that's where you would go. Oh, that's where Sam Bankman Freed was. I forgot. You know what I mean? It's funny how that's where they all end up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, man. It's, that's a shady part of the world, dude. If we if we ever go big, that's where we're going, homie. You know? <laughs> nah, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm going to an island off the coast of Africa. Man, it's too much, it's too much um, instability there, dude. I don't want no fucking nah, no, no thank I'll, you, no, man. I'll, I'll be good and stable. I'll be good. And no, stable. see, that's the problem. You'll be good and stable, but like, if China and America decide they they want that cobalt and they start dropping bombs, no matter how stable what you, you are, decide. my God. <laughs> they've <laughs> already decided. That's why I'm going to an island. You are mo- look. Elon Elon Musk is playing, paying little Africans like a dollar. Him and the Chinese to snatch coke out out of mines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they doing they do three generations over there. I was uh, me and Pro were actually talking about this yep. about how basically like I can sell my family into or they sell your family three generations in. So me and my wife start working in the cobalt mines for you. Then my child. My my firstborn works his entire life for you, and then his child gets to be free. So you basically are sold into indentured servitude for your family or your tribe or your community or whatever the case. Um, and that's still happening, you know what I mean, And today. and But the cool thing is there's lots of coups going on. In fact, right now, if you look uh, in Niger, and I was just reading about this yesterday, uh, they kicked the U.S. out. Uh, the, um, because if you look, man, it, there was a whole UN thing and the, the, uh, it was Central African woman was speaking and was like, you say you're here to protect us Americans, yet terrorism has gone up 5,000% since, since 2014. <laughs> 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 well, because we fund the terrorists. We, fund, you know what I mean? We fund oh, the terrorists true. and then we, we supposedly take care of, so we have all their government access and then we fund the terrorists to come in. You know what I mean? To destabilize the government so we can extract all of their stuff and then charge them and, and then create a poverty cycle because now they owe the U.S. It's a, yeah, man. So anyway, uh, Niger right now is throwing the U.S. out and they're like trying not to go. And like they, they released a, a, a worldwide statement that, of course, no one here, no press picked up here because funny how much we care about Africa. So anyway, you know what I mean? Because the, the liberal press loves to talk about Africa this and make movies about Africa. But when finally it's like the oppressive white U.S. government, we're literally taking back our land and, and overthrowing and taking out. And and the one article I did read, go, uh, it was a junta and this military personnel overthrew the democratically elected group of Niger oh, and now they have canceled the here American contract. Yeah, Exactly. But if you look it up at Jimmy Dore, bro, if, actually, if you look it up on Rumble, Jimmy Dore has a great thing on it. Um, but finally, you know what I mean? And that was what I was talking about with the world mess. But it's like, that's what they need to do. But my concern is Africans decide that they own Africa. It right. <laughs> belongs to them. Oh, shit. And they start trying to kick Americans and Chinese out. Americans and Chinese are going to start fighting God each forbid. other. For you know, that. you know. Yeah, so, yeah, Here's man, the statement. That's my concern. Here's the statement. The government of Niger, taking into account the aspirations and interests of its people, decides with full responsibility to denounce with immediate effect the agreement relating to the status of military personnel, the United States, and civilian employees of the American Department of Defense in the territory of the Republic of Niger. The Niger military spokesman, Colonel Major Amado um, Adramane, Adram, Ab, Abdramane, um, said in a statement on the national television den- announcing the change. This agreement is not only profoundly unfair in its substance, but it also does not meet the aspirations and interests of the Nigerian people, not to be confused with the Nigerian people. All right, there is a Niger and there's a Nigeria. This is, this is Niger. Yep. All right. Niger was once a key regional partner for the U.S., but relations have deteriorated since the military junta claimed power in 2023. <laughs> in a letter, always to- that <laughs> damn junta. <laughs> Go ahead, my man. Uh, God damn I, I bet they're cannibals too. 
<laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but but hey, but if you say that about another, another group, you're anti-Semitic. You're anti-Semitic. Candace Owens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Candace Owens gets the she well, gets no ahead. love here. Fuck her. Um, in a letter oh, sent to on, Congress man. in December. Hey, listen, listen. That that can be your boo, and you can go on right ahead. And again, hey, hey you got- call, Let me ask you though. Let mm-hmm. me ask. You. Mm-hmm. You didn't enjoy a little bit of how she uh, got that rabbi to expose himself. Not e- hello. I'm here. Y'all. <laughs> wait, 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 we're talking about a very important. Wait, wait, wait. Let's not. Let's not. I mean, that's look, man. That's that's fluffer. But but please continue on. This is important. The Niger stuff is important. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We we go back to that. Yeah, after this. yeah. Put a pin in that. Yeah. Put a pin in that. In a letter sent to Congress yeah, in yeah. December 2023, President Joe Biden noted that approximately 648 U.S. military personnel remain deployed to Niger. Um, condescending attitude. The announcement comes at the senior U.S. delegation's three-day visit to Niger this week. Um, um, Tremaine said, "So we went there and visited and pissed them off. And pissed like them we the went fuck off. off. Yes, yes. <laughs> Think about it. If, if, yes. If, if, if me and you are having problems, and I come over to your to, to to Savannah, and we meet at a nice restaurant, and at the end of that meeting." You send a decree out on all your socials, Mike, get the fuck out of Savannah and don't ever come back. It didn't go well. It didn't go well. You know what I'm saying? Hey, he says uh, the U.S. delegation was received out of courtesy and did not respect diplomatic practices, okay? By not providing oh information regarding the date of its arrival, the composition of the delegation, and the purpose of the visit. So basically, these motherfuckers just pulled they up. Just showed up. Yeah, like they had something going on, and they was looking like, wait, <laughs> you not know who I am? I'm the juggernaut, bitch. Like, you out of here. Mm-hmm. Pack your shit and get the fuck on. That's what you do. <laughs> They because they were used to they were used to their puppet and they show yeah. up and it's oh well here's the red carpet and here's the love and you know what I mean let's bust out the the the, the steaks and all that goodness and they came down it's like who the fuck are you you know what I mean right. you don't you don't belong in my hood no more <laughs> yeah, exactly. we eat tiger we eat tiger tonight <laughs> did, did, or or tiger eat you you know what I'm yeah but he's like. I'm sorry, did you have an appointment? Well, no, we're the U.S. Oh, well, you can fuck smooth off then. I, right. <laughs> I hear Cameroon is lovely this time of year. Yeah, go check out the pyramids, man. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> See, we're always Damn. getting scolded when we go over there. That's what Gabby says. Uh, we tick off so many oh. of these <laughs> nations. Um, she also asked that, uh, she says, I didn't know you weren't a fan. Expound Pro, so many are of her. You're right. So many people are because so many people just see what they see on TV. So many people yeah. have not actually had the opportunity to, to deal with her. And, um, that is something that I have had. And again, it's personal. You fuck every, everything, everything that pro <laughs> speaks on. Wait, will, wait, hold on. I thought we were talking about Nigel. Yeah, we no, was. No, go ahead, go ahead. We, we we was, but we yeah. we we basically just wrapped that off as Ed. Hey, we tick off so many damn people, right? <laughs> we thought they were, you know, they hey, thought we was the puppet, and we and we and we and, and 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 Niger was like, nigga, fuck you and the boat you flew in on, nigga. Not the plane you flew in, the boat you <laughs> flew in on, nigga. Like they took it there. You feel me? They hit it. They they hit the real. Um, they hit the real Last Riley nerd. on the ass. <laughs> Nah, they they yeah. hit them with the they hit the nigga. My president is black for real, nigga. Ain't your Obama black, nigga? My president black, black, nigga. What the hell you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers better get up out of here. Hey, hey, but hey, but on that though, that delegation they sent over there, they probably sent Dr. Richard Rachel Levine. Oh God, the, probably throw his Bad feet idea. up on the table. Horrible idea. <laughs> Horrible idea. <laughs> Horrible idea. Yeah, you don't, you don't send nobody like that to Africans? To Africans? Uh, they send Rachel. Yeah, they they like, like, it was Rachel. It was Rachel. It was Rachel Levine, Maxine Waters, and um, who's the Secretary of State? Uh, Anthony Blinken, right? 
blanking. And, blanking. Uh, and, Matt, and Matt, yeah. You, and and uh, what's his name? Mark Britton, Max Britton. The, all, the, the guy yeah. with the bald head who was still the people <laughs> legend. <laughs> that's that, that's what, what they the hell said. is going on. Shouts out to Jay oh, Powell. Oh, that's building, lion man. food right there. J- <laughs> my dog Jay Powell. <laughs> my whole point of that was. It- <laughs> My whole point of that was just that um, Africa, I think, is starting to – look, U.S. is losing its grip. You know what I mean? And the only way for us to come back around the world and at home is good business. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and our, that's our only hope, you know, because the war thing is failing. And good businessmen know that. So, right. and, and uh, you know, and, and <laughs> but what, the but design what is to take business, America Mike? out. Huh? What is big business, Mike? No, good business, not big business. Good business. Good business. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good business. Yeah. Good business. <laughs> not big good business. No, I'm boy. talking like like the African <laughs> initiative that, that Trump started. And I, I mean, between the two guys we got now, Donald Trump is good for business comparatively. Comparatively. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. Comparatively. Without a doubt. So. He's good for business. And, and that's the thing. If you go to these countries and you go, hey, man, let's work on trade. You know what I mean? Instead of guns, let's work on roads and let's work on trade and, you know what I mean, um, and it, education exchange and, and things like that. Because China is doing that and it's working. I mean, China's not going in with guns. They're going in with roads. And, and yes, right. that if you look at it, there's a whole thing there. And they talk about the confessions of an economic hitman talk about this, right? about how they'll go into a place like that. And he was talking about South America and they'll build a factory and build highways. But it, you know what I mean? But it's only for the rich people in those places. And those other people don't have cars or anything. And it makes it impossible for them to live where they did live before. And it makes things worse. And so, um, you know, that's been the American plan. And it's failing and people are now taking that shit back over because you can only do that to people for so long. So... You know, we need good business. We need to show them why, you know, working with us is profitable. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how they uh, sent <clears throat> the interstate here in America through the hood every time. Every time. Yeah. Every, t- <laughs> every time. They put every interstate time. straight through the hood every time. Every time. Because it's good for the economy. But you know who else know. is, you know, who else is, is, is good at that? Um, going over to Africa and taking in roads and respecting their history or whatever it is and their culture. You know who else was good at you know who else Mother Russia. Mother Russia. Mother, Mother Russia. Russia. So, you know, America but man, anyway, fuck them. Fuck them motherfuckers. That's let me let me get to Gabby's question. Yeah, but 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 when it comes to China though, y'all gotta watch it. Even though they come in with roads, they got some back door deals. If they slip on them payments, oh, so of, but that's whatever anybody. They did. That's anybody. That's yeah. anybody. But if you, yeah. if, if, if this person is saying this, if they're doing this, and they're in this position to where you know what I'm saying, all right, you know what I'm saying, you got the means. We know you got the means. You got all the rare earth minerals in the world right here. I don't care how you pay us back. We'll help you get what needs to be situated because we do know this technology and you in turn pay us back. That means with all your resources and minerals, bitch, go make the money so you can pay us. It's not like you can't just get her done. And if you don't, oh, well, you failed. It is what it is. You just better negotiate your deal properly and you better be able to produce what you say you're going to produce or you're going to fall on your dick, bro. That's business. That's business. That's no different than going to the car lot and telling them, hey, you're going to make these payments and you don't make these payments. Oh, bitch, give me my car back. And I'm going to you take your car you with whatever you got left. I don't care. Baby car seat, whatever. Everything's going with me when I take your car. <laughs> Man, this is, believe it or not, they don't even say give me the car back. You just go outside one day and it's not there and anymore. it's not there I'm anymore. I'm speaking from experience. Don't it's speak. not there I'm anymore. <laughs> I, I, I don't I've only seen it happen to people I've never had it happen to myself because I've never had a car payment a day in my life shouts out to the auto auctions them bitches work Oh man. <laughs> man, I might need to come down there and holler at you dog amen. you might need to get some hey man listen let me hey. It took, it took me a little while to figure that out but I'm right there with you bro hey man listen boy hey dog let me, let me hold a <laughs> Let me let me hold a twenty fourteen Civic till payday. You know what I'm saying? Hey, listen. Now, now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
it's the matter of getting so right now it's tax season right this is tax season this is the worst time to go to the auto auction point blank period tax season is the worst Why time you say that? because all the dealerships are going in there and everybody else oh, is yeah. going in there there's a high influx of everybody money got, in the yeah. streets right so because yep. there's a high influx of money okay. in the streets everybody wants to go to the auction right now and get a car off the auction block so you feel me a car that you would get for anywhere from three to nine thousand dollars that same car is going 12 15 could be even twenty thousand dollars depending on the type car it is and how wanted that car is and how clean the car is when i say clean i'm talking about as far as running um the sellability of the car yeah yeah. So, um, yeah. This November uh, and January are the or November. Yeah, November and February, I think, are the two best months to buy. Uh, like so the slowest months. Feb- to get. February <laughs> is when it starts getting hot because the dealers are preparing for tax season. All right, so the best time to get in there, honestly, is like June, July, August, September, October, November ish. Because in December you got because I know December is good. Yeah, yeah. De- de- December yeah. is like you, it's it's an inventory thing, and then it's also you know you got people who are going to go and trying to buy cars, especially with so many auto brokers out there now. You know they'll just get together and go. Well, and tax write off, like yeah, people are like, I need to buy a couple trucks. Yeah. You know what I mean for yeah. tax write off and yeah. that kind of stuff. So, so if you sell trucks. Yeah, from yeah, I got to You know my truck guy. You know where I'm at, dog. I know about them trucks. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, let me bring this up on the screen right quick. Gabby asked. Man, I'm gonna me, let y'all go, man. All right, oh, man. Sorry, guys. Nah, go ahead, bro. Go ahead, man. Handle your biz, man. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna answer Gabby's question. Mike, you already know the answer to this question. You know where I'm gonna go, but I got an extra picture that I haven't showed you yet, Mike. So that is up on the screen right All now, right. and I'm about to tell this story. So I will haul at you Chris tomorrow, Mike. player. Yes, sir. Chris, Mike. I'm looking at that screen right now. So, Gabby, what's up? I'm talking to Gabby right now. Hey, Gabby Steele. You're awesome. Boom. Oh, look at that. All right. Hold on. I'm bringing it up. You can probably hear my echo my bad. Sorry, I turned it off. It's all good, brother. Who is that? What is that car? Who is that? Oh, wow. You, you don't know where that truck, you don't know where that vehicle right there is at? That's the beast. Now, ain't it? Nah. Oh, okay. Nah, that's not the beast, but that's that is a part of the beast team. <laughs> that is a part wow. of the beast team that is right outside of the white house. We're inside the main fences at the white house. We literally, so hey, where, hmm? what, where's the, uh, hey, next time you at the white house, ask them where's the auction where they sell the hope. <laughs> that? that's I, the one i want to hear i just might have to do that i just might have to do yeah that. yeah yeah so back here behind yeah, there, like, everybody all of us are literally we're all literally just walking outside of the white house right now so if you guys follow my mouse towards this side over here right to the left over here is candace owens candace owens is walking in front of us so, you know, take uh, my, yeah. back to Candace. Tech, tech, took, <laughs> took my picture because, you know, I'm out here like, bitch, I just walked out the White House. Like, I literally just went from sniffing White House air to sniffing air outside. You know what I'm saying? Like, literally where we just came from. And Candace Owens is walking in front of us. Now, for those who don't know, um, Seaport Pro is not my first Twitter page. I actually had a DJ protocol page. I had a protocol page. I, I did. That existed from 2008 to 2019. I am I am legit Bluebird certified. All right. When Candace Owens did her Revolt Nation um, segment, we all know what Ti did, right? Ti right. made a spectacle out of the situation. When, but he agreed with Killer Mike, and Killer Mike literally <laughs> was saying the same exact things that Candace was saying. Killer Mike wasn't saying nothing, anything different. But the problem was, Candace was a black Republican, a Trump supporter. 
And they made that the beat up on Candace Owens show. You're a black Republican. We're going to get up here because she didn't even have another black Republican up there with her. They didn't have a Marge Torre up there who I don't I don't know if he was a Republican at that time. I think he may have. I think he did. It, 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 um, he was kind of like conservative Republican identifying at that point in time. He wasn't full blown libertarian, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure around that time he was. Anyway, they didn't put someone like him or a Coleon Nor right up on that stage with Candace Owens. They put another woman and that was it. Meanwhile, you had T.I. and Killer Mike and this other dude and this other chick. And it was just heavy liberal up against Candace. And it was the beat up Candace show. So she's talking. She's saying what she said. And T.I. being a comedian or, or a, a, a striving comedian. Clinton, I mean, just call him, uh, yeah, yeah. But let's call him for what he, for, for the moment of what it was, right? Striving comedian. You're a hip hop artist. You're looking for that gotcha moment, right? You're looking for a gotcha moment. She's talking and he gets a gotcha moment and he interrupts her, right? But you started with some bullshit, right? Crowd goes crazy. Candace never regains steam, all right? This guy, T.I., claims to be, right? Claims to be the king of the South, right? How are you claiming to be king of the South and you won't even let a woman speak? You're interrupting a woman as she, no matter whatever stupid things you may feel she's saying out of her mouth, still is the king of the South. You're not letting this woman speak. I had to speak up on that. I spoke up and I said, hey, T.I., you a whole ass bitch ass nigga for that. Are you gonna be the king of the south, and you won't even let this woman speak? I don't know how long my tweet stayed up, but I lost my Twitter account. All right. Who? Ti Ti put the hit out on me. Ti put the hit out on me, and they and they obliged. And again, this is this is this is DJ. This is me. This is DJ Protocol. All right, the HBCU <laughs> circuit. DJ, okay? The guy who has big name Albany State, big name Savannah State, pretty big name within Atlanta, HBCU. They know who I am, all right? They've come to the basketball games at Savannah State. They witnessed me rock the roof off that arena at these lit games, no matter who we was playing against. Fam, you, NCCU, uh, Clark it, Atlanta didn't matter who was playing. If I'm DJing, I'm rocking that bitch. And they all experienced that. You feel me? They all experienced it. So they know who I am. My name is ringing names in these streets. T.I. sees it and says, oh, hell no. Nah. Put the head out on me. They take me out. That was September 2019. Fast forward to the picture that you see on the screen. October 4th, 2019. We at the White House. Candace is right there. Protocol goes to Candace down. Let me see. Let me let me go pull this up. I gotta go pull this up right quick. Cause y'all, y'all got to see how I was dressed. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to see how I was dressed so you will know who was approaching Candace, right? I wasn't just I wasn't a nigga in no jeans. I ain't even y'all know me. Y'all know I love my Jordan. It's a suit, yeah. You are in the, like that pro, looking like that secret security. Looking like suit. the secret look like- security <laughs> suit. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Because like, that's what you look like. Though. You know what I'm saying? And I and I had an earpiece in my ear and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. nigga, literally looked like security, bro. Hold on. Oh, here I am. Let me see. I just there I go. All right, hold on. I'm about to bring it up on screen. Just a second. Um. All right. Here. Let's go here. All right. Marge is, is Marge still a libertarian? Yeah, he's still a he's still a libertarian. He's still a libertarian. All right. So let me let me press play on this right quick. Um so I can speed up to me. Trump is great for America. Trump has done There we go. There I go. All right. A nigga got on a vest. I got on a button down. 
dread slick back, my beard. It don't look as luxurious as this does now. But it was looking good. You know what I'm saying? I got earpiece. You feel me? A nigga looks important. And I got your little turning point USA bullshit on around my neck. You know what I'm saying? I got on the little pass. So I walk up, you know, bubbly me. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Miss Owens, what's up? My name's Protocol. I'm from Savannah. Appreciate the event. You know what I'm saying? This was dope. You know, I just wanted to introduce myself and be like, hey, I want to let you know I sacrificed my Twitter in defense of you because, you know, what T.I. did was some BS. This woman clutches her purse like, who is this nigga? Literally, is her who is this nigga? Literally, her response. Oh, okay. And turns off and walks away. No, oh she man. Just said okay to you. All that's, she did was say okay to you. That's it. Oh, okay. Turn around and walk off. There is no. Oh man, I'm sorry. I appreciate you for doing that. Right. No, hey, man, these people are horrible. I'm so sorry that happened to you, especially on the account of me. But maybe maybe you scared her, dog. Maybe you were like, hey, maybe she thought you were like, bitch, you caught me by Twitter. Now get that on your knees. It you know, maybe she was it, worried like the next thing out of your mouth was going to be like. <laughs> oh, so, so I'm going to say that. What if she thought you were going to try to prison her up? You know what I'm so, saying? So I'm going to say that. Standing right next to this truck, knowing damn well that you're Trump's homie. At this point in time, you're Trump's homie. Trump loves you at this point in time, right? He loves you at this point in time. What happened to Gabby's comment? It disappeared. That was one of my favorites. Trump. Black hand of Owens, folks. Black hand of Owens. <laughs> really, Trump? Did you just say? <laughs> yeah, Gabby. That happened. That that truly happened. <laughs> So, you know, um, as I see and, and, and my thing with it is and like I don't like personally, I don't give a fuck what your reasoning is for doing that. You're fucking in the most protected p- place that you could ever be. And clear. All right. Clearly, let's just count black man, black man, black man, black man, black man, black man, man this dude look, right here, black man. Honestly, you know bro, I hear you. I so, feel you. Look, look, I feel you. I feel, it's not that I don't feel you, but you and I personally know people that we're working with currently that I feel like I have much more beef and issue with than just you snubbed me the first and only time I met you. No, it, it's you know not, and, it's, and it's, and I feel and you. We, and we you work with them right. and show and up to have, them day in and day and out. You, and they are and you have, listen, you have the right to do that, but here's the difference. Here's the difference. I don't catch slack in the streets for anything that they do. I don't get slack in the streets for what they do. As a black conservative, I get slack for the shit that Candace says out her mouth. I have to answer to shit and for things that she says out her mouth. All right. I have to do that. Not that I choose to do that. But, but that's not it her gets fault. brought to me. Yes, it is. This is the shit she said out of fucking No, mouth. that's your choice. No, 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 dude, no, 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 because, no. Wait, wait, because, no, no, because if it were reversed, okay, it'd be Joy, what's her name, Joy Reed, you know, the, the that public humiliation wig they're making her wear. Mm-hmm. That is the dress for black men is that blonde white man wig they're making her wear. Like, that is a humiliation ritual no. right in front of us. <laughs> Straight up. Look, Straight up. Look, look, she, look, she got the Trump hat there. It's like it's a black woman. We can't put her in a dress because that would make sense. So we're gonna put a man blonde wig on her to humiliate. You know what and, I mean? To, like anyway, and you know, but, but, I, well, but hear me, but hear me. If you were a liberal and you were in these streets, you'd have to defend liberals. Her. Liberals do not have to defend. I don't hear liberals bringing up. You know what I'm saying? Um. She, I don't, I don't, I don't hear liberals bringing up or having to defend Joy and Reed or defend themselves against Joy and Reed. I don't see it. I never witnessed it. And again, I can only speak to my experiences and studies. My experiences is people always bring up that's your girl, Candace Owens, ain't it? 
You feel me? I even have. I even told you guys before. What about Kareem? Would you say Kareem? Would that be a fair comparison? If no, you were liberal, no, they would they say Kareem John Pierre they, they don't bring up Kareem. Like, we do it. Yeah, we do it to Democrats. That, that's, yeah. that's cringe, John Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cringe. Like, do we do, you know, we do it to Democrats? Yes. But again, it's not just like a. I go in the Republican Party meetings and I meet new people in their party for the first time. And the first thing they want to bring up to me is, oh, my God, I just love Candace Owens. Don't you love what she's doing for you in the black community? No, bitch, I don't. <laughs> no. Okay, well, you, you know, right. no, I don't. Wait, 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 you feel wait, me? And, and and that's what but, I'm but, saying. But, and that's okay, There's dude. It's like being a comedian your whole life, and people loving stupid, weak ass, dumb comedians. You're happy they're a comedy fan because you know they're in. Their mind is at least open on some level. You know what I mean? It's one of those things, bro, where. No, you don't have to like Candace Owens. And I'm not but going to. And I'm not going to give her. Open people up to you. No, to no. open people up to, to your message is a good thing. It, and that's fine if they come that Even way. If but you don't hate listen. And, and I'm going to hate the bitch. And I'm going to. And I'm going to openly speak up about how I hate you. You're still going to put money in your pocket. And, and guess what? Still and, put money in your and, guess, and guess what? And, and you're still going to put money in your pocket. And I'm, and I'm still. Listen, I hate Joe Biden, and that motherfucker still put money in my pocket, and I can't stand that motherfucker. He put no you know money in nobody's pocket, man. And, he's, no, no. Listen, he's yoking you. What, listen, whatever money he's, he's giving you. Joe Biden is the money spicy. He's he. Is this, you are paying far higher of a price than the money you put in your pocket. You, I you, promise you, you that. You are, you're, you're, absolutely, anyway. you're absolutely correct on that. I will not say that you're not. However, I am enjoying grifting off this motherfucker, okay? I am getting money well, grifted. That's fair. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you grift off Candace. I'm saying Candace is going to open. Okay, so as Oprah is kind of gone and Gail could not hold that spot and love it or hate it, there are people yeah, that have that Gail. it factor. Candace has that it factor. Oh, 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 Gail. Gail. Gail King. Gail King. Remember, they tried to they tried to make her the next Oprah. They gave her the range. They gave oh, her Oprah's yeah. time okay. slot. They gave her Oprah's like studio. And they were like, you're going to be the next Oprah. She just couldn't hold the spot. She couldn't hold that spot. Yeah. Candace can hold well, that well, spot. She, de- she destroyed that when she went after Kobe. Yeah, yeah, it was so, already destroyed before that. Yeah. Let's be real. It wasn't also, that was right. brown, but that didn't help. <laughs> it's a charisma, too, man. There's just certain people have certain stuff. Just like when you um you replace a lead singer. This other singer can sing just as good. Or, you know what I mean? Or you replace an actor in a, a, a TV role. It's like, it's just not the same. They don't bring the same energy, you mm-hmm. know? And, and Candace brings the energy. Love her or hate her, she brings the energy. And the mm-hmm. fact that she's holding down being a mom and being a Christian and being a conservative versus Oprah, oh, no, you know. Man. People want to cut their legs open. Let me stop. Man, Look, let's anyway, just so, say what it is, protocol. What's up? If, it, if, if it was fresh Mike at the White House instead of you, and he approached Candace, it would have been all good. It would have been all good. <laughs> it would have been all fucking good. It would have been all good. And that's my problem, right? And that's where the problem comes Candace in, Hall. right? The we'd, problem we'd comes had, in. Had some you know, <laughs> we'd have been... We'd have been fist fighting over my wife right now. You, you know, know and, 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 and whatever the case would be. But I'm going to be real. Mike, you know what I'm saying? She she may have got caught by the Mike swag off the front, but Mike pockets ain't deep enough for her. You feel me? So she would have oh, treated well, no. him. Yeah. She would have treated him just like a regular degla ass nigga. You feel me? Which goes and takes me to my next point. Right. And Gabby, oh, um, here we go. Gabby, Gabby mentioned it. Right. She says half of these people there were in Beck were in Blexit, too. I bet you're absolutely correct. Yeah. The, the crowd yeah. was Blexit, right? The crowd was Blexit. That was how she reacted to Blexit men. But not only that, where is Blexit now? Blexit fell off. Blexit should have been working its ass off in these last four years because you had so many blacks who were disenfranchised from the Republican, I mean, from the Democrat Party that was looking for a place to call home, bro. And they didn't do anything. It 
was a grip. It was never serious, bro. It was never serious. It was literally a get rich off of these people's situation. And I know that because of my movement within Blexit when I was dealing with them. And then the people who left Blexit, people like Sharice Lane, people like Uber Guy. There are people who was like, nah, bro, Blexit is really on some other ish. I'm not rocking with them. TP USA is on some other ish. I'm not rocking with them. So people on the outside, they're always going to look at things and be like, oh, my God, that looks so cool. But you've never been inside. You've never seen it. So as a person who's inside and who's seen it and has had to deal with these people and deal with people who's dealt with these people longer than you've dealt with these people and you're getting together and you're communicating, you're finding out, oh, shit, these people ain't who we thought they were. Right. That's where we reserve the right. And we can say, nah, bro, it ain't even that grass is greener on the other thing. Nah, bro, it looks green, my nigga, but it ain't green. It ain't green. You know, and that's what that's really what that situation was, bro. Um, right. It just it just it just wasn't right. And there are people who just that's just like that's OK. I, I'll equivalent I'll equivalent it to this. Right. We know about Beyonce. Right. And there are a lot of us who know the truth about yeah. Beyonce and we ain't fucking with Beyonce and we ain't going to fuck with Beyonce. Right. The beehive. But the beehive. <laughs> thank you. But the beehive. They still ride. So it's the same thing with Candace, right? You got these people who believe and know the truth, and we're going to speak on it. And then everybody else is like, yeah, okay, but still, she, oh my God, I am in love with you. Oh my God. You feel me? Best okay, song thanks. ever. You know what I'm saying? Like you're going to have those people. Uh, and, and me, yeah. No, I her, I never thought Beyonce was that good. Whatever. Seriously. But, but, I'm sorry. But still but but still, let me ask you protocol. I, on on no level you didn't enjoy a little bit how she got that rabbi to expose himself. I mean, it's good. I she's mean, good at what she, she's, she's so good, good at what she's Hey, look, man, I, I got to say this, and I got to get out this song because it's almost been an hour and a half. Go ahead, so. But uh, I, I'm just going to say, man, bro, if I didn't know any better, I think you didn't like Candace Owens. <laughs> oh, yeah, you didn't like it? Nah, bro. It's not that I don't like Candace Owens, right? It's not that I don't Here's like Here's what I'm hoping, because I know yes. Here's what I love. Sooner, sooner before later, the paths are going to cross again. Yes, they are. And I hope when those paths cross, she's nice to you. She's polite to you. And I hope that if it comes around in conversation, you're like, we met once before, but it, it was kind of a weird deal. And she was like, maybe I was having a terrible day. I caught you at the wrong yeah. time. I was freaked out about something else. Maybe she, you know, do celebrities, dude, you, you like you're, you're a celebrity and you're really good with people. Not every celebrity is. And then sometimes you might just catch them at a wrong time. And yes, she said a lot of fucked up shit. I think she's growing. Just like they held her to the fire about how she was on Joe Rogan and said she she wasn't really a Christian and she's come along and now she's very Christian. I think having her children and having her family changed her. I think it really did because there was a point in my life a few years back that if you asked me, I'd be like, no, I'm not a Christian at all. I don't believe in it. And now I'm a full Christian. And I'll tell you why I believe I was wrong. So I think she's grown as a person and I genuinely hope she's nice. And if she's not nice, I'll say fuck the bitch and we'll blow it up all over the place and make a million dollars off it. <laughs> hey, straight up, man. straight up. And we'll see, you know, I'm sure the paths will, will cross again and I will not have no kind of problem. Um, to, um, address what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, you were, so you yeah. gave me the cold shoulder. Yeah, and, and, and you know yeah, it's not uh, even not even the cold shoulder, bro. Because it's not just that. You know, there are other things. There was there was the. Oh yo, I'll holler at you. Go ahead, bro. Go go ahead, ahead, we man. had a whole conversation yeah. last Sunday. All right, <laughs> All right. Yes, I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bro. All right, bro. Bye. Bye. All right, first night. Shouts out to my partner, first right, night, man. man. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> oh man, yeah, we literally did have this whole conversation um, last week on rumble on rumble so if you guys happen to miss rumble on rumble um hey man go back and watch it it was a great episode but um yeah go back and check the rewind yeah man 
watch that rewind, hit that like button, leave a comment, and let us know that you're there on the replay. Um, yeah, man, it's the fact that it's just too much that took place, right? Because not only, not only was it that, right? I'm gonna show you one more thing. Pro got the goods. Pro Uh-oh. got the goods, man. Pro got the goods. So there was this. This, this, not, makes this not from the black number. phone, is it? Huh? This not from the black phone, is it? Oh, yeah, this from the black phone right here. Check this okay, out. Okay, there we go. Check this out. Going dark. This was this was Blexit. This was Blexit in Atlanta. Let's go. Tell me if y'all remember or, or recognize a face or two. Nappy head Candace, y'all. Nappy head ponytail Candace. <laughs> Got the little bit hanging out the back. I can't put in the ponytail on Candace. All right, I ain't gonna go no further. We gonna we gonna stop there. So this was <laughs> this was the Blexit event that took place in Atlanta um, in November of 2019. All right. And um, at this event, um, I was there. You know, you saw me in the first 10 seconds and then you saw me again like 10, 15 seconds later. Um, It was a very interesting situation. Because um, Candace did something. Candace did something that I honestly, I I took offense to um, at the Black City event. And that was, she showed her wedding documentary at the Black City event. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she recorded. That's, you know, that's not the place for that. It's not the place for it, bro. Not the place for it. And mind you now. Who's producing? Huh? She. It was her. Who's producing? Because, I mean... <laughs> Somebody should have checked that. Like, man, this is not even in line with the program. Not even in line with this the program. This left field. And she was, and her excuse was, well, you know, my granddad's here, and I wanted to share this with him, and he couldn't make it to the wedding, so I wanted to show it here with you guys. And it's he like, couldn't make it to the wedding. <laughs> he couldn't make it to the wedding because her husband looked like Fresh Mike. <laughs> he wasn't the only one, bro. When I tell you. When I tell you it was a lily white wedding, bro, the black, the only black people that was in that wedding that I saw again. Were working. I, I, no, <laughs> <laughs> they, were working. they were working. They were in her bridal party, bro. And it was only like a thimble full of them. It was only a thimble oh, full. Of it was like, you know, you can tell it was like her baby sister, you know what I'm saying? Maybe a cousin or somebody, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who knows her, family member. But outside of that, bro, nah. Matter of fact, in the group, in the group, in the, in the Rashad Ritchie group, someone shared a picture recently of her at her baby shower. Not one piece of chocolate. Not one. And so far. The only piece of chocolate. Her, her and her children. Only piece of chocolate. That's it. Everything else wow. was milk. Milk, 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 milk. That's it. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? You're at this Black City event. Now, I already know. I ain't going to lie. I took offense to the fact that the Black City event was at the theater in Buckhead. 
It wasn't at the Fox Theater, which is Atlanta proper. It wasn't. Hmm? Oh, so the, I mean, no, no, but here in Atlanta proper now. Huh? They look, they trying to get out. <laughs> they trying to get out, but Bucket <laughs> is a letter proper. But I mean, y'all in the video it showed the fox no, that was that, just riding through, no, catching some footage. No, that was that was that the fox. I don't think that was fox. Was that the fox? I mean, you, I, I mean, I, about the inside. No, nah, I'm not saying that. It's a, it's a street no, view. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's you what, know. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm pulling. Trying to pull up now. The street view. Oh, okay, maybe they would just ride through catching footage. No, nah, that's the Buckhead Theater, bro. You know, no, no, nah, nah, I ain't talking about on the inside. I no, mean, no, 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 I saw no. the fox. No, I'm, no, I'm saying I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm. Can you see the screen now? I'm looking at it, but I, I just see you. You just see me? Okay, it's coming. Yeah. I, oh wait, no, it's not. Hold on, my black ass. I know it's late. It's damn near one o'clock. All right. It's on the screen now. Can you see that? Not yet. It's about to come up, probably. All right. But it's, um, I mean, whether or not, I think it was just a ride through that I saw. Because it only showed the outside, and I saw it for like a split second. Yeah, that was the, that, that was the bucket. It's on the screen now. It was only a split second, but okay. it, it's, it's the bucket. It was the bucket theater. It wasn't the Fox. I've been in the Fox. I DJ'd a, uh, okay. I've DJed a Sweet 16 at the Fox. I know the Fox. Okay, yeah. okay. But um, so you know, we were at the Buckhead Theater. You know, what I'm saying with all the, all the the uppity folk. You know, what I'm saying the people with the cream, mm-hmm. straight cream. You know what I'm saying? They was riding by. Look, I ain't gonna lie, but I ain't gonna lie. They was riding by, looking like. We're all y'all doing out here? I thought we got rid of all of them. Right. <laughs> Right, <laughs> literally was the look. I thought, look, look, I th- I thought we got rid of all them when we closed out the club. <laughs> honey, honey, they're back. I went shopping, and they and, and they were there. They done showed up. <laughs> <laughs> they done showed up again. Shit, they done popped back up. God damn it. So, um, but yeah, you know, so we were here. And um, it was just a, a very, you know it, man. Look, it's 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 one o'clock in the morning, you know what I'm saying? So we got to be we got to be silly, Gabby. Um, yeah, man, it was it was very very interesting. Um, you know what I'm saying? Just being there and witnessing that happen. You know what I'm saying? Witnessing the the yeah. playing of that that documentary, and that was something like if you wanted your granddad to see it, you wanted to share it with them. Like you're in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? There are hotels that have beautiful yes. suites. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful yes. suites. And with a DVD player? Come on, Hey, you man. can't disown it. I'm, surely you can send someone to Walmart <laughs> to pick you up a DVD player for $100 me? and throw it away when you leave. Or, or go get you a projector. You know what I'm saying? Go get something like that. There's yeah. a way. You They got a big TV on the screen. I'm pretty sure that... There's a laptop that this is playing off of. You know what I'm saying? You can plug up to the yeah, TV yeah. and y'all can watch this. But no, you decided to show this in the Black City event. You decided to show this in the Black I City can, event to a room full I can of, imagine. Hmm? Yeah, I, I can imagine when it showed, it was real quiet in there, wasn't it? Quiet. Quiet. Well, no the, reaction. The only like, re- man, the, is, is- the only reaction was me walking out like this some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know? And that's what you said? It's- Nigga, this is me. Nigga, I got up and left. <laughs> on this this some bull <laughs> and and the funny thing is I ain't even gonna flex. Real nigga moment, right quick. It was a we had a group chat. It was a nigga in there that was talking shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <clears throat> this nigga was in there talking gangster shit to a lot of us that were Trump supporters. You feel me? And again, I'm like, I'm the oldest dude in there. You know what I'm saying? And this dude was pretty older too. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I say oldest dude in there. I'm like 29, 30 at this time. You know what I'm saying? I'm 30. At this, at this point in time, I had just turned, I had just turned, I was 19. Yeah. No, I had just turned 31. Cause that was 2019. Yeah, so I just turned 31. So I was okay. like the oldest dude around. And this older dude, I want to say he was like 33, 34. 
and he was talking trash to them folk, to them kids, and talking to them, you know, real sideways because they support Trump, bro. And I was like, bro, you older, cuz? Hey, man, come see me. Like, they, they, bro, I'm from the Pope, bro. You go, Come see me, my nigga. Matter of fact, guess what? Bro, I'll be in Atlanta at the Black City event. You say you going, I'm going to be there because see me outside, bro, straight up. And that's how that's where I was with it. So that book, I was like, I was already feeling, you know what I'm saying, froggy because yeah. of knowing that I'm finna like we finna talk outside. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah. Um I see this. I'm like, man, it's some bullshit. So I get up and I walked outside early. Like, I'm like, all right, they in here still watching this because I'm finna go hit the blunt. I'm finna get like cuz being cuz about this about to get gangster. So actually we had met where they filmed this where they're standing at right now looking at um looking at the theater yep we were right i was right there outside waiting on him and uh he ended up coming across there yeah he came yeah he came but then he found out oh this is a real nigga oh sh- well i'm about to get like he came with his people was with him and it was just me and my bro you feel me? But it didn't even matter because it was it was about to go down. And then Kane Face ended up coming outside. Shouts out to Kane Face, man. Kane Face was a real one. Kane Face was right there with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, shouts out to bros, man. Dead ass. R.I.P., man. Um, but he came out and he seen what it was, and it was a whole nother story then. And I just had to let him know, bro. But I can that shit when it like I'm in the room, bro. No, none of that. And really. Don't even do it when I'm not around. Cause if I catch wind that you did it, bro, it's going down. And you know what? I ain't even gonna lie. So I'm gonna be real. One of my first email addresses was D A Wolverine, the Wolverine, because Wolverine is literally my favorite X Men, hands down. And he was initially um, my favorite Marvel character. Up until I got, you know, to understand Black Panther and Iron Man. And then it just became those three. Like, they just shared the top the top space, as far as I'm concerned, as far as Marvel characters. But Wolverine was my nigga, right? And it was because, like, I watched, like, so right now, I'm watching X-Men 92, right now. Like, that's what, that's the show that I'm watching, so I can watch X-Men 97 and, and understand it fully. But uh, uh, Wolverine is a ass hole in 92 and is with the shits point blank period every time with the every time shits, period don't give a fuck about nothing and i'm and i'm watching this now and i'm like yo the fact that this is my fa-, and i watch this faithfully i watch this show faithfully you know what i'm saying to see him act like this as an adult to be able to think back on me as a child, loving, watching, aspiring to be this asshole on top of the other assholes that I aspired to be growing up through life, the Kanye Wests of the world, right? Um, he was like, wow, I see this. So now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, damn, bro, I'm, I literally was a Wolverine. Really didn't give a fuck. I'm with the shits. I will tell you whatever and tell you to come at me, bub. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, let's get to it. So, you know, he he understood that, yo, this nigga here is really about it. This nigga literally came, and he was here, and he was with the shit. I don't think he wanted to come meet me in the park, but it was too many people that was in the chat that knew who I was, that made sure it was explicitly known. Like, well, you was talking all that trap, boy, but protocol is here, and he is, he is, he, you going to go or not? No, no, no. You go what you go do. <laughs> so, you know, he, he came. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't too happy afterwards. Like he oh man. I'm pretty sure if he had on a diaper or some shit, but he soiled the fuck out of that thing there, boy. But um yeah, man, it, it just it was just, you know, some some weird old things going on um within that whole situation. But I, I realized that, you know, she wasn't really about that life. Even to the point to where, you know what I'm saying, that was October, let me see. This happened in November. This happened in November. This Black City event happened in November. The home, uh, 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 the White House was in October. Um, 
And in between, this is when I really found out Blexit really wasn't about that life. In between was Savannah State Homecoming. All right. Okay. I was I you know I buy, I get tents I I get tailgate spaces. Matter of fact, we doing it big. We doing it big for homecoming, man. October twenty six, y'all. October twenty six, y'all need to make sure you're in Savannah, Georgia, for Savannah State homecoming. October the twenty six. All right. I'm telling y'all again, October twenty six, and I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to bang it off a lot more for everybody. You know what I'm saying? As we get closer to it, you'll be find out more and more things. But man, it's going down like it's never going down. A matter of fact, I'm gonna tell y'all how much it's going down for October 26 homecoming, y'all. Check this out, bros. Check this out. You ready? I'm about to blow your mind right quick. What's up? You know Savannah State. You know homecoming. All right. Yep. It is March Do 30th. <laughs> it is March. 30th homecoming is october 26 hear me now it is march the 30th all the rv spots are gone what all of the rv spots bruh i almost i almost choked bro like i didn't even get the spot that i wanted to get i didn't even get the spot that i wanted to get bro half the shits is gone already bro I, I wow. was like, I, I've been, so I was checking it every week, right? And I should have, I should have been checking it every day, every week, but I was checking it every week. And earlier this week, it was like Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday. Cause I was in a meeting. I was in a meeting with Hotel Jesus and them. I'm sitting there. We're in the meeting. I was drinking my drink. They were talking about something that really didn't pertain to me. So I was like, oh, I'm sitting in front of the computer here. Yeah. SSU Tigers. Eh, pull it up. All right, Gabby. Good night, darling. Yeah, we finna wrap up in a second, too. We finna wrap up, too. But October 26th, you need to be here. We're going to talk more offline. You, the rest of the GBRC, October 26th, Savannah State University. So, anyway, yeah, man, I'm checking. Other, I'm checking, and all the spaces is gone. I almost choke on my drink. And the only reason I almost choke on my drink because I didn't want to spit my drink <laughs> on my laptop. You feel me? So, it was either choke or spit it on the laptop. I'd rather choke and deal with that later on as opposed to spitting my drink out on my <laughs> laptop and fucking it up. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> so, no doubt um, on that one. I, um, I check, you know, I go in and I, I buy the two spaces that I can purchase because they're the only two that are left, you know, for the purpose that I want to do. But, um, yeah, man, March. By March 26th, all tailgates, uh, all, um, what you call it, were gone for, um, for the Sold RVs. Out. And and now, you know, you got the spaces that you got left for the others. And I was upset. So now I got a very interesting space when it comes to tailgating this year. And uh, we're going to see how it goes. So there is that. But, um, yeah, man, overall, man, that was some BS of what Candace pulled, man, um, and what she's doing. And it's just a major grift, you know. And, you know, like Mike says, it does work for people coming to find people like me. But at what extent? You know what I'm saying? Like at what extent? Because they came over to me and loving Candace Owens, and then they bring up Candace Owens to me, and I'm like, man, fuck Candace Owens. They're like, oh, my God, why? <laughs> why? And it's like, well, listen, you know, I hear this woman on the Breakfast Club say, I don't believe in race, you know what I'm saying, or, 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 or no, excuse me, let me, let me rewind. She goes on the Breakfast Club and she says, oh, I'm all about the black family and the black this, and I think blacks need this and this, 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 black, black, black this, and blacks this. And then they say, but you're married to... A white man, and you have white kids, man. and they, and then she immediately says, "Oh well, I don't look at race in my family. We don't, we don't look at race in my family." But you're looking at race at my family. You're bringing race in the equation when yeah. it comes to my family, but when it comes to yours, you don't bring it up. I think that is a very, a very shady, grifty thing to say. Um, also. You talk about black men needing to be protected and respected and all this good stuff. But when a black man tells you that he di- also is uh, uh, stood up in protection of a black woman he's never met, you know what I'm saying, against a, a authoritative black man in her defense. Um, and he tells you about it, the person that he, you know, stands up for you in kind 
respond as if you needed protection from him. <laughs> so it's just too many Man, things. That's how, that's how some of them act. Exactly. And I don't have to respect you if you act that way, you know, and that's just where I'm at with it. Like, I'm not going to respect you if you act that way. And, you know, it is what it is. I don't I don't have to. And it's OK. People can like who they like and, and don't like who they don't like. But I ain't fucking around on the fuck around. That's just what that is. Oh, man. That's what's up. Well, brother, I know you on the clock. But I done been on it all day. And I've Making been, that money. Hey, man, you know, you got to make a deal with a deal, Pimpin. <laughs> you got to make a deal with a deal. Already clocked in. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. Double duty. Get that check, bro. Get that check. That's what's coming. Let's see. Sure, bro. man. I'm going to catch up on Rumble on Sunday, man. Already, man. Already, man. We'll be going down. Oh, man, we got we got the great Shane Cashman. The great Shane Cashman. Will be on. Yeah, he hung with Kanye. I got some questions. Oh yeah, come on with it, man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, All right, man. I'm Orange gonna jump Crush. off. All right, bro. Yeah, I just got a message about Orange Crush telling people, "Hey, man, right. it's gonna be one lane trying to get out there." No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> it's always been one lane. <laughs> oh Lord, it is going down to Allen Breeze right now. Oh, that's right. It's um. Yeah, well, they got a crazy party. It's freaks versus Greeks tonight. It's going down. It's crazy. All right, protocol. All right, Pepe. Have a good night, man. Yep. Yep. Like I said before, there will be no Orange Crush 2K24 on Tybee Island Beach. It's been canceled. They're saying it's canceled, my guy. But, you know, they're going to they gonna keep doing what they do. Niggas going to still go out there and, and try and party or whatever the case may be. All right, guys, before we get up out of here, I have one more thing to share with you. Shouts out to everybody who is catching this replay, man. Hit that like button, share, 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 and hit the comments, man. It's muchly obliged. We appreciate you. It's all love. Yummy. Yummy. All right, let's see here. Pull this up. And I will pull this up. Mm. All right, guys. It's going down tomorrow, or well, today, later on, whichever you want to look at it. Um, the 30th of March, 5 p.m. until 9 p.m. is the slated times. It is the three thousand dollars Savannah Teens Got Talent Showcase and Competition. I've been talking about this for a few weeks, man. We've had some great artists show up in and um audition and we have come down to the final ones this is going to be this is going to be something phenomenal man i ain't gonna even lie to you bro this is gonna be something straight dope man um let me see here we go we got all of them right here we got one last hope we got gavin um we got janaya we have london we have demonte and we have Jaden. this is going to be so freaking dope i cannot wait i cannot wait i cannot wait these kids have been practicing they put their they're putting their all into putting together a phenomenal show on tomorrow and it's going to be awesome this is a three thousand dollar got talent competition who gonna walk away with them three bands tomorrow yo who gonna walk away with them three bands you got to come tomorrow and find out, y'all. Gots to come tomorrow and find out. It's going down in a major way at the Savannah History Museum, guys. You want to know what the Savannah History Museum is? I'm going to tell you what the Savannah History Museum is. It's at the Visitor Center. It's right there at the, at the, at the tip of Farm Street where you pay your water bills at now. All right? Right there off of uh, Louisville Road, the old train station right there. All right? When you get on the trolleys at, right there. You want to know how to get there real easily? I'm going to tell you how to get there real easily. Get on Liberty. Go down Liberty to Louisville Road. Turn on Louisville Road. Go under the bridge. Make that immediate right-hand turn. 
into that parking lot. Go up the hill around the corner to the stop sign. Go straight through the stop sign. You'll see a big old parking lot. Park in the parking lot. Come in the doors and the awnings. Savannah History Museum. You'll see the line. You can't miss it. Come on in. It's going to be amazing. I cannot wait. These kids have worked their butts off to put on an amazing show. I can't wait to get my judge on tomorrow. It's going to be some very tough competition. It's going to be crazy. I can't wait. Savannah Teens Got Talent. 5 p.m. Savannah History Museum. All right. Guys, it's been real. It was fun, man. Another fun. Damn, boy. This is going to be a five-hour show tonight, boy. We is busting it down. Gracious day. We had a whole hour and a half um, phone line conversation. You know what I'm saying? It was dope. Shouts out to 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 Malarkey. I mean, um, Malark M Low Key M Low Key. All right. Shouts out to him for not showing up for the debate, but coming into the conversation in the comment section. Um, one Sunday on Rumble on Rumble, he's going to be there. I'll let you guys know whichever Rumble on Rumble he decides to show up to. Oh, I meant to show this to y'all. Let me let me show this, and then I'm gonna show y'all one more thing when we go. Look at my gift, Joe and the whole gotta go. I made that at the little event. <laughs> I forgot what the bop was. I was bopping to, but the DJ was getting to it. It was on point. I think it was some uh, feel, I think it was feel mob. I think I was bopping the feel mob. Mm-hmm. With my drink in my hand. All right. All right. Um, let's see. That was me at Island Breeze. Like a fool rapping. I think I was rapping to Gucci. Um, let's see. Uh Shane Cashman on Sunday, y'all. Make sure y'all are in the building. I'll have the great Shane Cashman on the show. Me and Fresh Mike. It's going to be great, man. I cannot wait. This will be the most tuned into episode of Rumble on Rumble that we have had to date. So um y'all make sure y'all come check in, in the chats, man. It's gonna be something serious. I put it on Rumble and I'm gonna put it on X as well. All right. So you guys make sure you come through. Shane Cashman on Rumble on Rumble with Fresh Mike and Protocol, man. 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's going the fuck down, man. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Guys, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. To heaven and back, it's time to wrap up. And we're going to wrap up with the Pope Savant, man, Mr. Pope Fischel. And um, the name of the song is Look Good, Feel Good. Because I look good and I feel good. Y'all be good. Love you to death. Enjoy this song. And I will see y'all on the other side. Let's go.
nah, nah, nah. Hear the drum, come get some. Parade in the street, good.